O oh, praise to the Most High. O oh, praise the Lord. It's the Sabbath day, the new moon. Let's give the Lord a hand for that thing that we made it for another new moon. O oh, praise to the Most High. Oh, praise. Oh, praise. Oh, praise to the Lord. Oh, praise to the Most High. So tonight's topic is called Not a Novice. Not a Novice. That's tonight's topic. Let's open up with the book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 2. Proverbs, chapter 1, and verse 2. Let's start there. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 2. Mm -hmm. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the ways of understanding, Read. to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, mm -hmm. Come on. to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Read that again, verse 4. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 4. Come on. To, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. He says to give subtle to the simple and to the young man, knowledge and discretion. So that's the, that's the purpose of wisdom. That's the purpose of God's law. Because young men, they come in, you, you brothers, you're coming into the truth. You're still young in this truth. You understand? You're still Johnny come lately, as they call them. Okay? So the job of the laws of God is to give, is to give you subtlety because we're simple-minded. It says, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Read verse 4 again. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 4. Mm -hmm. To give subtlety to the simple, Read. to the young man, knowledge and discretion. So the wisdom of the Lord, the wisdom, the instruction, you understand, the wisdom of understanding in verse 2 will give you subtlety, you understand, because he's simple-minded, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Let's get the definition of discretion, okay? Watch this. The definition of discretion. Let's get there. Now I want you to read that. Read that definition. Call it when you read it. When you see it. Read that. Definition of discretion. Mm -hmm. The quality of behaving or speaking in such a way as to avoid causing offense or revealing confidential information. So now it says the quality of behaving or speaking in such a way to avoid causing offense or revealing confidential information. Hmm, let me see. Now, I want you to read this now. Read that. Read the synonym. Okay, read that. Similar. Tact. Tact. So, discretion is tact. So, the wisdom of the law, the instruction of wisdom will give you tact, which is discretion. Let's get the definition of tact. Let's see. Okay, read that. Definition of tact. Noun, mm -hmm. skill and sensitivity in dealing with others or with difficult issues. So skill, skill with dealing with difficult situations. You must have skill. Wisdom will give you skill. You understand? Wisdom will give you skill. Text, subtlety. Watch this. Hold that. Give me the book of, um, give me the book of Sirach. Okay, give me Sirach 1. Might be verse 25. If you just look at chapter 1. Sirach chapter 1, verse 19. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Wisdom reigneth down skill and knowledge of understanding, and exalteth them to honor that all have passed. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, wisdom reigneth down skill. Wisdom of the Lord will give you skill and knowledge of understanding. You understand? And if you hold it fast, wisdom of the Lord will exalt you. That's what he's saying right there. Okay? Now, Let's get um, the, the synonyms of text. Is what? You see that part right there? Look at that. Read that. Similar. Mm -hmm. Wisdom. Wisdom. So text, strategy is wisdom. Okay, wisdom. Read that. Hmm. Read. Definition of wisdom. Now, the Come quality on. of having experience, knowledge, and good judgment. Hmm. Hmm. The quality of Come being on. wise. You see that thing? Wisdom is the quality, not quantity. The quality of having experience in this truth with the scriptures, having through some stuff, having been through some stuff. You understand? Tribulation and trial. You understand? Evils in your life, the things, the trials and tribulation that came upon you. Wisdom, you understand? In this truth, experience in this truth is as knowledge and good judgment because you use the laws of God. Because you have experience of knowledge, the quality of being wise. 
Now, let's get some synonyms of that. Read that for me. Hmm. Similar. Sense. Sense. Wisdom gives you sense. Wisdom and sense is synonymous. Text, wisdom, subtlety, they are all synonymous. Okay? Read that. Common sense. Common sense. You see what wisdom text? Wisdom is text. Text is common sense. You understand? Hmm, that's some heavy stuff right there, beautiful stuff. Let's get the definition of common sense. Yeah, read it. Definition of common sense. Now, mm -hmm. good sense and sound judgment in practical methods. You see that? Good sense and sound judgment in practical methods. When it comes to God's commandments, it's, it's about practical. The laws of God is a practical method. God's commandment is practical method. There's nothing theoretical. It's all practical. You understand? It is good sense and sound judgment in practical matters. Now, go back to Proverbs, okay? Go back to Proverbs 1. Read verse 4 again. Read Proverbs 1 verse 2, then we're going to jump down to verse 4. Read again. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 2. Mm -hmm. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the ways of understanding. Read. To give subtlety to the simple, to the mm -hmm. young men, knowledge and discretion. You see that thing? So wisdom will give subtlety to the simple, to the young men, knowledge and discretion. Discretion. That thing right there is understanding, is wisdom, is tech, common sense. God's laws will give you that. Now, what I've been seeing in the congregation is that I'm seeing young men disrespectful of those that are set over them. High-ranking soldiers over them, they are disrespectful to those brothers. That will not be tolerated up in here. It will not take place. If you're going to disrespect your brother, disobey orders, you hate correction and command, guess what? Get the hell out. Go back to the Christian church. We don't need you. You understand? The Lord is not looking for that. We will, the most like God will not build a government of wicked, demonic, abominable Negroes who hate correction, law, and order, and structure. We will not operate like that. You understand? Read the verse again. Verse 4. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1, verse 4. Mm -hmm. To give subtlety to the simple. Come on. To the young men, knowledge and discretion. To the young men, knowledge and discretion. Watch this. Give me the book. Um, give me the book of 2nd Ezra, okay, 2nd Ezra 10, verse 33, because we read earlier, it says, subtlety, he says, to the young man, subtlety, subtlety, the simple, the, and what, to the young man, knowledge and discretion, discretion is sense, is common sense, before you get there, get that in Nehemiah 8, verse 8 for me, Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 8, watch this, the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8, verse 8, so they read in the book of the law, in the law of God distinctly mm -hmm. and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. You see that? It says they, we, read, we read in the book of the laws of God distinctly and we give the sense and cause you to understand the reading. That's why it says to know to give young men knowledge and discretion, to give you sense, common sense, how to make sensible decisions, good decisions, good judgment based on what is written therein. The laws of God will give you that. God's laws will give you sense. If you don't have sense, that means you're not keeping God's commandments. That means you don't fear God. That's why you will have what? You will have lack of sense. Okay? Now, give me 2nd Ezra 10 verse 33. 2nd Ezra chapter 10 verse 33. Because Ezra, the Lord spoke to Ezra about this thing. Get that. 2nd Ezra 10 verse 33. Come on. 2nd book of Ezra chapter 10 verse 33. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, Stand up manfully, and I will advise thee. He says, stand up like a man, and I'm going to advise you. I'm going to teach you. I'm going to give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Wisdom and knowledge and understanding, subtlety, you understand? Um, discretion is only given to those that stand up manfully for this fight. You understand? Go ahead. Then said I, speak on, my Lord. Mm -hmm. In me, only forsake me not, lest I die frustrate of my hope. You see what he's saying? He says, speak on, my Lord. In me, only forsake me not. He says, don't forsake me, Lord, because I'm simple and dumb as hell. Lest I die frustrated of my hope. What is the hope? The hope in getting the kingdom. You understand? Because if you don't stand up manfully, you don't allow the Lord to advise you, you're going to die and not get the kingdom. Go ahead. For I have seen that I knew not, 
You see that? And I just for I've seen that I knew not. I see that I don't know anything. I'm dumb as hell. Read. And hear that I do not know. And hear that I don't know. The things I'm hearing, I don't know about them. Okay, read. Come on. Or oh, is my sense deceived? You see what I mean? my soul in a dream? Or is my soul, is my sense deceived? My sense is deceived. The minute you realize, when you find yourself in a situation where, when a brother gives you an order, a command, you don't want to do it, you don't say nothing, you, you, you do it whenever you feel like it, you understand? Or you are argumentative, you cause strife, guess what? Your sense is deceived. I'm going to tell you straight right now. Your sense is deceived. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Read it again, verse 36. Second book of Ezra, chapter 10, verse 36. Mm -hmm. Or oh, is my sense deceived? Or oh, my soul in a dream? Or oh, my soul in a dream. Meaning what? In the, imagine, you are in the imagination of your evil mind. You are following the imagination of your evil heart. Why? Because your sense is deceived. The laws of God will give you sense. When your sense is deceived, the laws of God are, have no place in you. You understand? So therefore, you will follow the imagination of your evil mind. That's what the Lord is saying. You understand? Go back to Proverbs 1 verse 4 again. The book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 4. Mm -hmm. To give subtlety to the same. Right. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. So that's what, that's what we are about. At SOC, we teach God's laws. We teach knowledge and discretion to young men that are coming into this church. And a lot of you young men, you have no respect for the Bible. You have no respect for the laws of God. You have no respect for those brothers that have been here before you. You don't respect them. Why? Because your sense is deceived and you are not about nothing. You are good for nothing, Negro. I'm telling you straight up. You understand? When you read through the scriptures, you see men that they were endowed with wisdom, but they honor those that came before them. Those that did not do that, guess what? The Lord put them to death. He used them, he used them as an example of what not to do. Some of you, some of you, 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 your mind is gone. Your mind is still in the world with fringes and a bottle of blue. You understand? You don't understand what you're in for. You are here to cause confusion and division. We don't need you. You can go back into the world. Nobody's going to cry for you. You understand? But the Lord is looking for those that are going to humble down to this book and do what he said. You understand? Now, watch this. Give me, give me Sarah chapter 6, verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 18. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 18. Read. My son, get the instruction from thy youth up. Mm -hmm. So shall thou find wisdom till thine old age. You see that thing? You must get an instruction from your youth. Young men, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, discretion. You understand? So as a young man, your job is to get an instruction from your youth. That's your job. Your job is not to say nothing. Your job is to gather instruction. That's why you're here. You were in the world. You didn't know nothing. When you come in Israel, guess what? Your job is to gather instruction from your youth up so that when, you, when you're when you older, you're going to find wisdom. Because now, over, you're going to get experience in applying the laws of God. You understand? But some of you, you don't gather instruction. You think you have arrived already. You understand? I don't know how many times I brought this up. But guess what? There's some of you wicked demons that are up in here who do not want to humble down to what this Bible says. Guess what? You are going to get called out and you're going to be asked to leave peacefully and get the hell out. You understand? We're not, we, I'm not looking for numbers. We're looking for brothers that are reliable quality. And guess what? A few men will get this brother. Understand that. Read again, verse 18. Okay. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 18. Read. My, my son, get the instruction from thy youth up. Mm -hmm. So shall thou find wisdom till thine old age. So shall you find wisdom till they are all your own your old age. Some of you you've been counseled, but you're still repeating the same nonsense over and over again. Why? Now he's spilling out into the congregation because you don't want to check it. We are gonna check you. Okay, go ahead. Come unto her as one that ploweth and soweth, and wait for her good fruits, for mm -hmm. thou shalt not toil much in laboring about her. But thou shalt eat of a fruit right soon. Because it takes patience. You have to have patience to receive wisdom. Wisdom will not land on anybody's lap. We have to humble down so we can receive wisdom. 
The only way we're going to receive the Lord will give us his wisdom. We must humble down to what this Bible says. Okay, watch this. Give me that in um, Sarah chapter um, Sarah chapter 5. Okay. Give me that in um, Ecclesiasticus. You know what? Give me Sarah, give me, first, give me Sarah chapter 21. Sarah chapter 21, verse 11. First. Sarah 21, verse 11. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 21, verse 11. Mm -hmm. He that keepeth the law of the law getteth the understanding thereof. If you keep God's commandments, you will receive understanding. Go ahead. And the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. You see that? When you perfect the fearing of God's laws, you will receive wisdom. So there's that fear. You keep God's laws, you get understanding. Then you get to understand why you're not supposed to do certain things in the laws of God as you're studying and applying it. Then over time, guess what? As you perfect the fear of God's laws, the Lord will endow you with wisdom. It does not fall on your lap. Track one now. Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 26. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 1, verse 26. Go ahead. If thou desire wisdom, keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. And the Lord shall give it unto thee. You see that? If you desire wisdom, you keep the commandments. That's the source. That's the secret source. You desire wisdom, you keep the commandments. And the Lord will give it unto thee in due season. Go back to Sarak 6 now. Okay. Sarak chapter 6. Read verse 19 one more again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 19. Mm -hmm. Come unto her as one that ploweth and soweth. Wait. And wait for her good fruit. For thou shalt not toil much in laboring about her, but thou shalt eat of her fruit right soon. You're going to eat of the fruit of the spirit, which is the, the fruit of wisdom, right to me in due season. If you desire her and you keep the commandments and you patiently wait for the Lord to give her unto thee, guess what? He says you shall eat of the fruit right soon. But some of you, you think you're there already. Some of you, you think you know too much. Some of you, you undermine other brothers because you think you know better. You think you, are, you, know, you know better even though they've been here before you. That's some evil Negro. Evil Negroes move like that. You understand? That's dumb as hell. The spirit of the Lord is not working with you. I'm going to tell you right now. Understand that. Go ahead. She is very unpleasant to the unlearned. You see that? Because you're not learned, you are, no, you are a novice. But you act like you know, but you are a novice. Say she's very unpleasant to the unlearned. If you're unlearned, the wisdom of the Lord will be unpleasant to you. Go ahead. He that is without understanding will not remain with her. If because you don't keep God's commandments, the wisdom of the Lord will not remain with you. Wait. She will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial. You see that? The wisdom of the Lord will lie upon the unlearned as a mighty stone of trial. It's going to be a heavy burden on you. You're not going to find joy in keeping God's commandments. Why? Because you are unlearned. And it's, ple it's unpleasant to you. Now it feels like this huge stone that is sitting on your back. Go ahead. And he will cast her from him ere it belong. You see that thing? It says, and he will cast her. You will cast the wisdom of the Lord from you before it long. You know what you're going to say? You know what? I'm tired of this law. I'm tired of, of living my life in, in, in such a, in such a controlled see, in, in such a controlled manner. I want to be free. I want to do this. I want to do that. And the laws of God are restricting me from doing that. Eventually, because you are not here for the right reasons, eventually you're going to frustrate it. And guess what? You're going to go back into the world. Go ahead. For wisdom is according to her name. Mm -hmm. And she is not manifest unto many. That's one thing we need to understand. The wisdom of the Lord is not manifest unto many. The wisdom of the Lord is, even, is only given to the meek. Wisdom is for the meek. Okay, go ahead. Give ear, my son. Mm -hmm. Receive my advice. You see that? And Give ear, my son. Give ear, my son. Meaning what? Open your spiritual ears and receive the understand, the advice, the counsel. Come on. And refuse not my counsel. You see that? And refuse not God's counsel. Jump down to verse 25. Read. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 25. Mm-hmm. Bow down thy shoulder, 
and bear her and be not grieved with her bonds. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, bow down your shoulder and bear her, meaning wisdom, and be not grieved with her bonds. Don't be grieved when the laws of God says, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. Don't be grieved when God's laws restrict you from doing things to, be, to destroy yourself. That's what the Lord is saying. You understand? Read on, verse 26. Come on. Come unto her with thy whole heart mm. and keep, keep her ways with all thy power. Meaning what? Don't be one foot in and one foot out when it comes to the laws of God. Be 100% in and the Lord will see that thing. Read. Search and seek and she shall be made known unto thee. And when thou hast gotten hold of her, let her not go. When you get, when you receive wisdom, it says, don't let it go. Don't, 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 don't get rid of God's laws because the laws of God are restricting your life. You understand? You must find joy and understand. The reason why the Lord says I must not do X, Y, and Z is because the most High God is protecting you from yourself. Read. For at the last, thou shalt find a rest. Mm -hmm. And that shall be turned to thy joy. And it shall be turned to your joy. Because when you keep God's laws, you receive wisdom, you receive understanding. Guess what? You're going to have the spirit of joy with you. The joy to apply the laws of God. The joy to keep laboring in this truth. You understand? The joy to understand law, order, structure, rank, command. That's how we deal in this camp. This is a military camp. We're not here to play games with nobody up in here. If you don't like order, you don't like your brother telling you what to do, listen, kick rocks. You understand? Kick rocks. We have not, we are not going to play with no one. You understand? Because you brothers, guess what? Now, the young men out there in the world, the young men out there in the world, they're looking for good examples. There's no good examples in our nation. Some of you, you play games because you think this is about you. This is not about you. This is about the Most High God and about his government that is raising up upon this earth and using men that he put his spirit upon to raise up the 12 tribes of Israel. So I don't want to hear no BS up in here. If you don't like the order that is set in the camp, get the hell out and go back into the world. We're not begging nobody. I'm going to tell you straight up. If you are here, we're going to deal because we understand what the Bible is saying. We understand what time we're in. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. We don't have time to play. Understand that thing. Okay? Watch this. Jump down to verse 32. Read verse 32 now. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 32. Read. My son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. Mm -hmm. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. You see what he's saying? My son, if thou will, if you will, you shall be taught. If you want to be taught, you are going to be taught. But the minute you come in and you've been here for two months, you've been here for six months, a year, two years, you think you're somewhere. You're crazy. You understand? You're crazy. The Lord says, my son, if thou will, thou shall be taught. Always have the spirit to learn. Don't think, no, I know this precept, I know that precept. You simple as that. Listen, you will learn until you die. You will learn this Bible and you will never finish the wisdom in it. And that spirit we all must have. You understand? If you want the Lord to increase us. Read it again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 32. Mm -hmm. My son, if thou wilt, thou shalt be taught. Read. And if thou wilt apply thy mind, thou shalt be prudent. And when you are taught, your job is to apply. And guess what? You says, the Lord says you be prudent, meaning extremely wise. That's what he's saying. Go ahead. If thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. And if thou bow thine ear, thou shalt be wise. You see what the Lord says, if you love to hear, you must love to hear the laws of God. He says, then you will receive understanding. Because faith cometh by hearing, get that in Romans 10. Okay. Romans 10, verse 17, read that. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17. Mm -hmm. So then, faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. No, 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 read it again, read it, right? Excuse me, sir. The book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17. Mm -hmm. 
So then, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. You see what he's saying? So faith come by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Your faith will only come when you hear the word of God. When you listen to the word of God on a daily basis, we've got multiple classes out that have been put out. You keep listening to classes, guess what? Your faith will increase. Why? Because you are hearing the word of God. Understand that. So go back to Ecclesiastes again. The book of Ecclesiastes. Chapter 6, verse 32. Mm, verse 33. Verse 33. Mm -hmm. If thou love to hear, thou shalt receive understanding. You see that? You love to hear the word of God. Your faith will increase. Guess what? You will receive understanding because you'll be applying. Go ahead. And if thou bow thine ear, thou shalt be wise. If you bow your ear, you are going to be wise. Meaning you bow your ear to the laws of God. You are humble down to what this Bible is saying. The Lord says, then you shall be wise. That's what he's saying right there. So what happens is that a lot of the times, if you don't apply this, if you don't like to, uh, to be taught, if you don't love to hear the word of God, you're not going to be wise. Neither will you apply your mind. Neither will you be prudent, the Lord is saying. Those things will not come to you. The Lord will not bless you with that. Why? Because you don't want to make sure that your foundation is set. A lot of you don't have a foundation yet. You understand? Already, you don't want to be told what to do. Simple instruction. Brothers, just be golozi. Listen. Me, when I see something like that, that's a betrayer right there. That's Judas right there. You understand? That's Korah, the son and Abiram. Those wicked, demonic Negroes that was in the wilderness going against Moses. Okay? Read on. Verse 34. Stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. You see that? Because what is with what gives us wisdom? Get that in Psalms 90 the set. Okay, it says, stand in the multitude of elders and cleave unto him that is why. What gives us wisdom? This is what gives us wisdom. Get that in Psalms 19, verse 7. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Go ahead. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. You see what gives us wisdom? The laws of God. God's commandments gives us wisdom. It makes us wise. So go back. Wisdom of okay, God. Go back to Sarah 6. Read verse 34 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 34. Mm -hmm. Stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. And cleave unto him that keeps God's commandments. Read on. Be willing to hear every goodly discourse. Every godly discourse, every godly discourse, meaning what? Discourse goes into counsel, counsel that is based on God's laws, right? Be willing to hear every godly discourse and let not the parables of understanding escape thee. He says, don't let the parables of understanding escape you. Hold that, give me with track 8 verse 8, okay? He says, don't let the parables of understanding escape you. Because why? You always... We, there's always wisdom that is being handed down, always. The same way our forefathers did back then, they handed down the wisdom down to us. We doing the same to our children, okay? And young men coming into this too. Read. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8, verse 8. Read. Despise not the discourse of the wise, mm -hmm. but acquaint thyself with their proverbs. The parables of understanding. He says, acquaint yourself with their proverbs. That's the parable or the parables of understanding that must not escape you. Go ahead. For of them thou shalt learn instruction mm -hmm. and how to serve great men with ease. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, because from them you want to learn instruction. Remember, it says, gather instruction from thy youth. You understand? So you shall find wisdom until thine old age. So your job is to gather instruction from all our job. We are gathering instruction. You understand? Go ahead. Miss not the discourse of the elders. The discourse is the discourse of the elders is the pro is their proverbs, they are parables of understanding, they are wise counsel. Right? For they also learned of their fathers, our forefathers that came before us, right? And of them thou shalt learn understanding. Mm -hmm. And to give answer as need required. And give answer as need, as need required. When it's needed for you to give answer, guess what? You give the answer. But meaning what? 
A lot of the time, there's no need for you to speak because you don't know nothing. Your job is to listen and learn so you can grow. So you can be equipped to go out and teach your nation God's law. That's what we're reading. Go back. Sirach chapter 6. Read verse 35 again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 35. Mm -hmm. Be willing to hear every godly discourse. Read. And let not the parables of understanding escape thee. Don't let the parables of understanding of the wise escape thee. Go ahead. And if thou seest a man of understanding, get thee be times unto him, mm -hmm. and let thy foot wear the steps of his door. You see what he's saying? He says, when you see a man of understanding, what gives us understanding? The laws of God. Like we read in Tract 1, verse 7, Tract 1, 26. He says, get thee be times unto him, meaning end. And let thy foot wear the steps of his door. Why? Because you dare to learn understanding, wisdom, knowledge. You understand how to move, how to make decisions on a day to day, how to deal with your own shortcomings on a day to day. What scriptures can you read? Which scriptures can you meditate upon so that you can be able to do what? To deal with that fleshly mind that is always plaguing us. You understand? That's the point of this. That's why counsel is important. Okay? Watch this. Give me. Give me the book of Sarah 21, okay? Get Sarah 21, read verse 14. Because when you think that you're somewhere, when you think that you cannot learn anything, nobody can teach you. When you think that you are somewhere, you disrespect the men that came before you. Listen, the Lord will not give you wisdom. You will become a reprobate. You will become void of judgment and wisdom. You'll find yourself going through the same thing over and over, and it's not getting fixed. Why? Because you think you know someone, you, know, you, you think you know better than the men that came before you. The most I don't deal with that. Okay? Read that. Sarah 21 verse 14. Let me show you the mindset of a, a novice whose sense is deceived. Watch this. This is the state of mind of a brother that thinks they know too much. They can disrespect the high-ranking soldiers over them. This is what the Lord said. Watch this. Read it. Sarah 21 verse 14. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21, verse 14. Mm -hmm. The inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel. You see that? The inner parts of a fool, the inner part is talking about your mind. It is the mind of a fool are like a broken vessel. A broken vessel is like a cup that is broken. It, you cannot do anything with it. Right? And he will hold no knowledge as long as he liveth. You see what the Bible is saying? Because his mind is broken. His mind is so broken that it can hold no knowledge as long as he's alive. The only time when you're, you're going to be able to hold knowledge is if you acknowledge that you are, you, are, you are broken and you need to be fixed. You understand? You've got issues and they need to be rectified with the laws of Until then, guess what? Your mind will be like a broken vessel. It will hold no knowledge, which is the laws of God. Understand that. Get that in... Um, read on. Read on. You know what? Before you get there... Um, Read Jeremiah 2, verse 13. Get Jeremiah 2, verse 13. Okay, read that. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 13. Read. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters. Read. And hewed, and hewed them out of cisterns, broken cisterns, that they can hold no water. Okay, read that again. Read verse 13 again. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 18. Right. For my people have committed to evil. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out of out cisterns, broken cisterns, that can hold no water. You hear what the Bible is saying? The Bible says, it says, for my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, meaning the laws of God, and you them out systems, broken systems, which that can hold no water. The broken systems, you understand, is talking about what? The philosophies of men. Those are broken systems. So now, because that's where our, the, the minds of our people is in, in those broken systems, Christianity, politics, you understand, democrats, okay, toy toy, touching, destroying property and all that, voting, all those are broken systems. Okay, so now the law says our mind is now like this. Our mind is like 
they are they are what they are they, they are they are broken systems that can hold no water. What is the water? Get that in Ephesians 5, verse 26. Let's see that the, the what, what is this water that cannot be held or contained in these broken systems. Ephesians 5, verse 26. Let's get there. The book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 26. Go ahead. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the way. You see what the Bible is saying? That he may sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So the water is the word of God. So go back to Jeremiah 2, verse 13. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, verse 18. Mm -hmm. For my people have committed to evil. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living water, and hewed them out cistern, broken cistern, that can hold no water. You see that broken cistern that can hold no water. The water is the word of God, which is God's knowledge. Go back to Sarah 21, verse 14 now. Again. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 21, verse 14. Mm -hmm. The inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel. Really? And he will hold no knowledge as long as he lives. You see what the Bible is saying? So Jeremiah and Israel, they are all saying the same thing. He says, that broken vessel, that mind that is like a broken vessel, that mind that is like a broken system, it can hold no water or no knowledge as long as he lives. The example of that is in the next verse. See the next verse. Come on. If a skillful man hear a wise word, he will commend it and add unto it. Mm -hmm. But as soon as one of no understanding heareth, it displeaseth him, and he casteth it behind his back. And he casteth it behind his back. So a skillful man, will, when they hear a wise word, what is a wise word? The laws of God. He says they will command it. They say, oh, that's right. Okay. That's actually true. And they will add unto it. But as soon as one of no understanding heareth it, it they, they, they become displeased. The laws of God is instruction of wisdom. When you hear instruction and it displeases you, guess what? You are like that broken vessel that can hold no knowledge. You're going to cut the word of God behind your back. Watch this. But Christ, he talked about that thing. Give me that in Matthew chapter 7. Christ, he spoke about that. Okay, Matthew 7. Matthew chapter 7, I believe it's verse 6. Yep, read that. Matthew 7 verse 6. Read that. The book of Matthew chapter 7 verse 6. Mm-hmm. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Come on. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine. Pray. Lest they trample them under their feet and turn again and rend you. You see what Christ is saying? He says, don't give that which is holy unto the dogs. What is holy? Get that in Romans 7 verse 12 real quick. Romans 7 verse 12. He says, don't give that which is holy unto the dogs. Read that. The book of Romans. Chapter 7, verse 12. Come on. Wherefore, the law is holy. Mm -hmm. And the commandment holy. And the commandment and just, holy. Come on. And just and good. You see that the law is holy, the commandment is holy. Just and good. So what is holy? The law and the commandment. So go back to Matthew. Chapter 7, verse 6. Let's understand what Christ was saying. Okay. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Give not that which is holy unto the dogs. Stop right there. So he says, don't give that which is lawful. Don't give the laws of God. That Because the laws of God is that which is holy. God's commandment is that which is holy. He says, don't give it unto the dogs. Who is he talking about? Our people. He says, don't give the laws of God to the dogs. Our people. You understand? Go ahead. Neither cast ye your pearls before swine. He's calling our, our people that hate the laws of God, that are pigs. Because guess what? A dog, the way they behave, the dog is still, they, they vomit, they'll eat the vomit again. You understand? The pig, you'll clean it up, they'll go back to the mud. They, meaning they don't value the laws of God. Okay, go ahead. Lest they trample them under their feet. You see and that? Then again, no, hold on. They, lest they trample them under their feet. That's what we read in Surah 21.15. When it says, but as soon as one of no understanding hear it, it, they will, it, they will get displeased and they will cast the word of God behind their back. That's what Christ is saying. Go ahead. And turn again 
and rend you. And they're going to turn again and fight you. Why? Because they, they, they are displeased by the word of God. And that's what you see. That's what I'm seeing. Some of you brothers, some of you men, hmm, I'm using that term loosely, but some of you men, you hate the Lord, you hate order and correction. You cannot be here at SOC if you hate order and correction, because what? We are about the Bible. We apply what it says, we love what it says, and we're going to do what it says, no matter how painful, no matter how difficult it is to hear. But it is the truth, it's medicine. It is medicine at the end of the day, whether it's bitter or not. It's still good for us. Understand that. And we're going to what? We're going to humble down to what it says. If you cannot humble down to what it says, this is not for you. You understand? You're going to be that dog or that swine that Christ is talking about. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 1. Okay? 1 Corinthians. Because what you need to understand is that if a novice, they hate God's commandments. They hate correction. Because the novice don't want to be taught. A novice cannot be taught. They are learned already. Me don't come next to me. You have all this great knowledge. You know too much. Don't come, don't come next to me. And if you are around me, I will not bring out anything that is, that I will not bring out the things that are hidden in this book. I will not do it. No, I will just be general conversation with you. Why? Because I know you think you know better. You think you are learned already, so you cannot be taught. You see the point? Now read that. First Corinthians 3 verse 1. First book of Corinthians chapter 3 verse 1. Mm -hmm. And I, brethren, could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as, as unto babes in Christ. You see, the apostle Paul is talking to the church of Corinth. He says, brethren, I can't speak unto you about spiritual things. You understand why? But I'm going to speak unto you as unto um, you know, fleshly men, carnal men, worldly men, even as unto babes in God. I'm going to talk to you like kids. Why? Because when he talks about spiritual things, he cannot understand it. They don't get it. Why? Because their mind is not on them. You are one foot in and one foot out. You're playing, you're faking the fun. You're playing Israelites. Okay, go ahead. I have fed you with milk. I have fed you with meat. What? I have fed you with milk. With milk. With milk. I says, I fed you with milk. You understand? But you still can't know. I fed you with milk, you still can't. Get that in first Peter 2 and 2. What is the milk? Okay, he says, I fed you with milk and not and not with with meat. Read that. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2. Come on. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 2. Mm -hmm. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the way, that he may grow thereby. You see that as a newborn babe, as a novice. As a newborn, is as what your desire must be the sincere milk of the way, the commandment, the laws, the statutes, and the commandments. That's your desire. You understand? Me, that's my desire. The sincere milk of the word that I may grow in this truth thereby, that I can be a benefit and a help to my nation. That's the mindset you have to have. Some of you, that's not your mindset because you don't want the milk. You go back to you go. You want to, you want to go straight to the meat, and you cannot bear. That's why that you, you, you're failing at basic fundamentals. You're getting it wrong. Why? Because you cannot, be, you, you, you cannot be taught. You see the point? You don't know nothing, but you can't be taught. That's called having lack of common sense. You see that? The laws of God will give you sense to know that. But because there's no sense, that's why you are void of judgment. Go back to 1 Corinthians 3. Read verse 2 again. First book of Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 2. Read. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. And not with milk. You have given the sincere word, the sincere milk of the word that you may grow. And you have not, you are not being given meat. Why? Why are you not given meat? Read on. Watch this. For hitherto he, he were not able to bear it. He says, You couldn't even bear the milk. So what would be the point of giving you the meat? There's no point. Right? Neither yet now are he able. Even now you are unable to bear the milk. So what would be the point of giving you the meat if you cannot bear the milk? He says it's a waste of time. Give me Hebrews 5. 
Hebrews 5 verse 12. The book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 12. You know what? Start at verse 11. Read verse 11. Watch this. The book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. You see what the apostle Paul was saying? He says, listen, we have many things to say, but they are and they are hard to be uttered. Why? Because you're dull of hearing. Your ears are blocked. You're spiritually deaf. So that's what the Lord is saying right here to the Apostle Paul. Go ahead. For when, for the time, he ought to be teachers, he have need that one teach you again. You see that? Because now you think you are a teacher. You think whenever you can teach, you think you are on some level. But you need to be taught again. You need to be educated once more in the, in the laws of righteousness, in the word of righteousness. You understand? Because you are a babe. Read again. Start at verse 11 again. Okay. The book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 11. Come on. Of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing ye are dull of hearing. He says, listen, we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. Okay, spiritually deaf and dumb. Go ahead. For when, for the time he ought to be teachers, he have need that one teach you again. Now he says, for the time you ought to be teachers, you are, is now it's necessary that you are taught again. How must you be taught again? Get that in uh, First Timothy, Second Timothy 2, verse 15. This is how you are going to be taught again. You have need that one teach you again. Watch this. Read it. Second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 15. Mm -hmm. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Come on. A workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. You see that thing? So now it says, a workman that needed not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. But for some ungodly reason, brothers, they are not, they are not skilled in the word of righteousness yet. You understand? But guess what? They have no shame. Yes, says, study to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Because if you are not ashamed, it means you are well studied to understand what this Bible is saying and you are in the right spirit. But their brothers up in here, they are not, they are not uh, skilled in the word of righteousness because you still have faith. But they have no shame. They are not, they don't know how to rightly divide the word of truth. Ha! Get that in Isaiah 28, verse 10. But they've got so much to say. Running their big black mouth makes me sick. Read it. Isaiah 28, the, verse 10. Read it. The book of Isaiah, chapter 28, verse 10. Come on. For precept must be upon precept. Precept must be upon precept. This is how you have to be taught again. To rightly divide the word of truth, precept upon precept. And it requires experience to do something like that. Go ahead. You have to apply the laws of God. You understand? And the Lord will open your spirit up to see how the precepts connect and they line up. Read. Precept upon precept. Mm -hmm. Line upon line. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. That's what it means that you must be taught again. Go back to Hebrews 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Read verse 12 again. The book of Hebrews chapter 5 verse 12. Mm -hmm. For when, for the time he ought to be teachers, he have need that one teach you again which be the first principle of the oracles of God. You see that? So for you to be taught again is the first principles of the oracles of God. Meaning that's the law. It's a commandment for you to be taught again. The apostle Paul is explaining to be born again. He's explaining being born again. Go ahead. And are become such as of need of milk and not of strong meat. You see what he's saying? It says, and are become such as of need of milk and not of strong meat. Meaning what? You're not ready for the meat yet. Because you cannot even bear the milk. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying. Because that's what was happening in the church of Corinth. You understand? You have wicked Negroes running their black mouth. Speaking against the Apostle Paul. When you brothers, when your brother gives you an instruction. A brother gives you an order. Guess what? There's not supposed to be any back and forth. The minute you start to do that, you're not with us. The minute you go back and forth with a brother. A brother that is over you is a high ranking over you. You already want to be causing strife. 
You are not with us. You understand? You are not of the Lord. You are of your father, the devil. And guess what? Your behavior will, be, will, will betray everything we're trying to build. Brother, you got to go. If you cannot check that spirit, you can do whatever the hell you want. But the only thing is, you cannot do it here. You cannot be among us. I'm going to tell you straight up. You understand? Me, I'm not here to beg nobody. But what I'm seeing is, I'm seeing some of you brothers, I see that camp. I see it when we come together. I see it when we come back from camp. I see that day. Wicked Negroes who think they are somewhere and they are not. So disrespectful to the high ranking, high ranking or soldiers over them. You think you are somewhere. I don't give a damn who you are. Listen, if you're not going to humble down, you're going to follow the order that we set in the camp as it is written, you can get the hell out. I'm going to tell you straight up. You understand? Read the Bible again. The book of Hebrews, chapter 5, verse 12. Read. For when for the time he ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and have become such as a need of milk and not of strong meat. Read. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. You see what the Bible is saying? Everyone that uses milk is unskillful, unskillful, unskillful in the word of righteousness because he is a babe. Read on. But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Mm. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, but strong meat belongs to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. They can be able to discern good and evil among men. Why? Because their senses are exercised. They, they have experience. They've been through some stuff. So they are able to what to discern good and evil among men. You understand? But a novice don't know how to do that. A novice will not be able to discern good and evil. Why? Because for you to discern good and evil, you need the fundamentals. You need the basis. You need the milk, the laws of the most high God. Go back to where it was at now. First Corinthians 3. First Corinthians 3. Read verse 2 again. First book of Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 2. Mm -hmm. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For hitherto you were not able to bear it. Neither yet now are ye able. Go ahead. For he I yet carnal. You see what he's saying? He says, because you are yet carnal, you're still simple as hell. You still, you, you, you are not, you're not spiritual yet. You understand? The old man is still ruling over you. The old man is still full. Is, is, you are, the old man is in full effect. You're not converted yet. That's why he says, for you are yet carnal. Go ahead. For whereas there is among you envy. There is strife. among you envy. It is big. The reason why you are still carnal is because there is among you envy. There's the spirit of envy among you. Go ahead. And strife and okay. divisions. Hold on. And what? And strife. And what? And strife. And strife. And strife. And strife. Let's get the definition of strife. I want to know what that word means. Okay. Let's get the definition of the word strife. Get that for me. Read it. Strife. Definition of strife, now, mm -hmm. angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues, conflict. You see what the strife is? Angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues, conflict. And con this conflict arises why? The conflict arises because there's, some, there's an instruction that is given to you, you don't want to do it. And because you don't want to say, I don't want to do it, instead you argue. You understand? You think you, you know better. And the brothers that have been here before you, they've been doing this job before you came here. You understand? Now when you are, when, when you've been around, you think you know better than the brothers that came before you. You understand? We will not tolerate this in this camp. They, they might tolerate it in other Israelite camps, but not here. Not at SOC. We will not tolerate that BS up in here. I'm going to tell you straight up. Read the definition again. Okay, come on. Definition of strife. Mm -hmm. Now, angry or bitter disagreement over fundamental issues. Conflict. You see that? Now I want you to read that. Read that. 
Con contention. Read the definition of contention. Definition of contention. Now, mm -hmm. heated disagreement. You see that thing? It's heated what? Because the Negro is boiling on the inside. You don't want to receive instruction. Why? Because some of you, let me tell you, some of you, you are older in terms of age. But in terms of your spiritual age, the Lord don't care about your physical age. He cares about your spiritual age. Some of you, you are older physically, but spiritually, you're still, you're not even a talker. You're still in your, you're still in your daily sex. I'm going to tell you straight. You understand? Your age don't mean nothing. There's brothers that are, are younger that have been here laboring before you. Where was you? You were in the world doing evil. Now, when you come into the truth, they've been laboring before you. You must give honor to those men. You understand? Because that's biblical. Okay? Now, watch this. We're still dealing with strife, right? Hmm. I want you to read the Merriam-Webster definition. Read that. Definition of strife mm -hmm. from merriam-webster.com. Read. A bitter, sometimes violent conflict or dissension. Read again. Bitter, sometimes violent conflict or dissension. Bitter, sometimes, you see, is the root, the root cause of strife is bitterness. The root cause of strife is bitterness. That's what the Lord is saying. Bitterness, sometimes violent conflict. This bitterness will lead to violent conflict. That's what the Lord is saying in, in the book of, uh, in First Corinthians. We're going to read one in James in a second. Okay, read that. An act of contention. An act of contention. Now watch this. Read that thing right there. Exertion or contention for superiority. Superiority. You see that? This, this thing right here is an exertion or contention for superiority. Where does this take place? This takes place because guess what? There are some brothers that are young in physical age, but older in spiritual age. Some of you, you are older in physical age, but you are, you are, you are, you are still newborn in spiritual age. And you think that because you look at a brother, he's younger than you in physical age, guess what? You don't have to listen to what he tells you to do. You're crazy. That means you don't read the Bible. You don't understand what this Bible says. You don't understand it. And me, I will not allow any brother Johnny come lately to disrespect the brother that has been laboring before you. You crazy. You understand? Some of you have, have started teaching now on the street. You understand? You go over the Sabbath and so forth. But that thing has made your head to be big. Now you think you, you're better than the brothers that laboring, that laboring, that have been laboring before you. You understand? Your intelligence, listen, your intelligence is below the ground. I'm going to tell you straight. Okay, because you're not going to read that in the scripture. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of James. Give me James. Okay, give me James 3 verse 14. James 3. We're coming back here to verse Corinthians 3 verse 4. Because this strife right here, listen, the root of strife is bitterness. The root of bitterness is hatred. Okay, so when a brother is bitter, he's got hatred in his mind. Understand it. Okay, James 3 verse 14. Read that. The book of James, chapter 3, verse 14. Read. But if ye have bitter envy and thrives in your heart, mm -hmm. glory not and lie not against the truth. He says, don't lie against the Holy Ghost. He says, but you have, if you have bitter envy and thrives in your mind, he says, don't glory over that thing. How do you glory? When you are given something to do, you don't want to do it. You understand? You just let it hang and all that. You don't give a damn about that thing. The Lord says, you've got bitter envy and strife in your heart. He says, but you lie. He says, don't glory because you're lying against the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. This wisdom descendeth not from above, mm -hmm. but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. You see what the Bible is saying? That type of wisdom means bitter envy and strife. Envy and strife is that this wisdom doesn't come from the most high. Because it's not wisdom, it's evil. But it's earthly, sensual, and devilish. It's of the devil. That means the devil is on you. That's what the Lord is saying. 
That means you've got the devil on you. The devil is in the driver's seat. The spirit of the Lord has left the building. Okay, go ahead. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. You see what the Bible is saying? It says wherever you find envy, you find strife. It says there is confusion and every evil work. Meaning what? All manner of evil you're going to see is going to pop up. Whenever the brother shows up, guess what? His spirit is not right. You understand? He is full of the devil. He don't even know how to act. He cannot even pretend. He's doing all things. Bro, why are you doing why did you, why did you do that? Why are you doing that? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It's because he's got the devil on him. And he can't even see it. You understand? But we're not going to wait for you for that devil to jump on somebody else in the congregation. We're not doing that. Okay? We want to protect the flock. Understand that? Okay? Go back to 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Read verse 3 again. First book of Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions. And what? Are ye not carnal? And divisions. And divisions. So guess what? You've got envy, you've got strife, and divisions. Because the envy and the strife, that's what they call. They call division. And division is the spirit of Satan. Unity is the spirit of the Lord. Division is the spirit of Satan. Watch this. Give me Romans 16, verse 17. Romans chapter 16, verse 17. Read that for me. The book of Romans, chapter 16, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. You hear what the Bible is saying? It says, Mark them which cause divisions and offenses. So the division is caused by what? It's caused by strife. The strife is caused by what? Envy. You, you see that? This envy is caused by what? Hatred. The reason why there's hatred because the laws of God are not being applied. You see the point? So now the Lord is saying, read again, verse 17. Come on. The book of Romans, chapter 16, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and avoid them. Because we don't teach division up in here. We don't allow anybody to come up in here to disrespect a brother that has been laboring before them. You understand? I see that. That thing vexes my spirit. And me, I'm not going to allow that thing to, to be comfortable in the congregation. Hell to the no. That will not happen. I'm not going to allow that BS to take place up here. You understand? I've seen it. I've seen it at camp this past summer. Make me sick to my stomach. You understand? And I'm seeing it again. You understand? I've been what not in there. You understand? Loose cannons. Just doing whatever the hell they want. Causing division. You understand? Being self-willed. Guess what? That will, not be, that will not be acceptable. You understand? It will not be acceptable. And I'm going to deal with it decisively. Don't get it twisted. Watch this. Give me the book of Galatians 6 and 3. You know what? Go back to 1 Corinthians. Let's finish that up. 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay. 1 Corinthians 3. Read verse 3 again. Let's finish that up. First book of Corinthians chapter 3 verse 3. For ye are yet carnal. For whereas there is among you envy and strife and divisions. Mm -hmm. Are ye not carnal and walk as men? You see that? Are you not carnal and walk as carnal men? That's what the Apostle Paul is asking because this thing, I've, I've picked it up, I've addressed it with one of you, with, with some of you brothers. Guess what? You're not stopping. You didn't take heed to the counsel. In fact, you doing it, you, you showing that I'm going to do it, I'm going to add, I'm going to add flame to this fire now. Instead of sitting, sitting down and fixing it, he said, no, I'm going to add flame to the fire. This is crazy. Guess what? We will not allow that thing to continue. Hell no. Give me that in Galatians 6 and 3. Because the reason why you see stuff, stuff like that take place, you think it's okay. A brother is given a job to do. I said, listen, I need you to do X, Y, and Z. To communicate with this brother, we need X, Y, and Z from you. The brother just ignores the messages. He don't say nothing. He does it whenever he feels like it. 
That's not somebody who wants to labor in the truth. That's somebody that is self-willed. You understand? You are given an instruction to do. You argue with a high-ranking soldier. You crazy. Guess what? You, not, you don't want to labor. You want to cause division. Because why? You think, you think, because like, one thing I'm seeing is that in the world, in Jesus' plantation, black men don't do this. Negroes don't move like that. You only think, you only see fit to do it when you come in Israel. Because why? Because it's, it's black people. Black people are about nothing. No, 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 we are not about nothing. We are about the laws of God and building up the 12 tribes of Israel, setting a good example to our people. But when you move contrary to that, contrary to that doctrine, guess what? You are not winning. You are not building with us. You are not here to build. You are here to destroy from within. And guess what? You will fail horribly so. Watch this. Um, give me Galatians 6, verse 3. The only reason why you see a brother move like that because you think you think you know better. You think you're better than that brother that has been laboring before you. You don't see that in the Bible. And the only example that you see, the Lord did not cuddle them. The Lord did not pat them on the back. Read. The book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth him, himself. You see, you're nothing. You not you just you Johnny Kamli just arrived now. You understand? There's brothers that have been laboring before you. Don't disrespect, don't disrespect those men. Don't disrespect those brothers. They've been laboring before you. They've seen things that you are yet to see. You understand? So read again verse 3. The book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 3. Mm -hmm. For if a man think himself to be something, when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. You understand? You're nothing. And you deceive yourself because you think you're somewhere and you're not. First Corinthians 10 verse 12. Read that. First book of Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 12. Come on. Wherefore, let him let him that think as he standeth take heed lest he fall. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, Wherefore, let him that think he standeth take heed lest he fall. You think you you think you got it? The Lord says take heed because you want to fall. Why? Because you think you're someone and you're not. Give me 1 Timothy 3, verse 5. You understand? Only novices, they move like this. You understand? Watch what, the, what, watch what the Apostle Paul said about this thing. Read that. 1 Timothy 3, verse 5. First book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Well, guess what? Novices don't know how to rule their own house. The first thing, first, first and foremost, talk about your spiritual house. You don't know how to rule to check to check your get your spirit in check. The Lord says, How can you take care of the church of God? You will not be able to take care of the nation of Israel if you cannot rule your own spirit. That's what the Lord is saying. Second Exodus 14, verse 13. Read that. Second book of Ezra, chapter 14, verse 18. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore. Set thine house in order. You see that? That's the first, that's the, the, the most that God, this is to every man. He says, now therefore, set your house in order. Meaning, rule your own house. Rule your house. Rule, get your spiritual house in check. He says, set your house in order. The Lord is about order. If your house is not in order, guess what? You cannot take care of the church of God. You cannot do it. The Lord is saying, First Peter 2 verse 5. First Peter 2. Verse 5. First book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 5. Mm -hmm. He also, as lively stones, are built, are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. You see that is as, as lively stone because lively oracles was given unto us when we came out of Egypt, which is God's laws by the hand of Moses. He says, we build up a spiritual house. You understand? The Lord is commanding us to set our spiritual houses in order. That's the first thing. Before you can set your physical house in order, set your spiritual house in order. So guess what? We must set our spiritual house in order by offering up spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Get that in Psalm 5 and 1. What are these spiritual sacrifices that we must offer up that are acceptable to the Lord by Jesus Christ? Read it. 
the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 35, verse 1. Mm -hmm. He that keepeth the law bringeth offerings now. Mm -hmm. He that taketh heed to the commandment offereth a peace offering. So you see that the keeping of the commandments, these are spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable to the Lord by Jesus Christ. Okay? Now watch this. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. 1 Corinthians 3, verse 9. First book of Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 9. Mm -hmm. For we are laborers together with God. He are God's husband. He are God's building. So we are God's building. You understand? We are God's building. We are laborers together with the Lord. We are God's husbandry. Husbandry goes into what? Farming. Okay? You understand? Taking care of the ground. When you're farming, you must make sure the ground is, is fertile. You take care of the weed, the unwanted... Um, uh, you know, crop uh, so called the weeds. You take care, you get rid of the weeds, prepare the ground, make sure the ground is fertile, the soil is, is moist, and all that, so you can be able to plant seeds. So, we are God's building, okay? The spiritual houses. Go ahead. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me, mm -hmm. as a wise master builder. So, the Apostle Paul says he is a wise master builder according to the grace of God, which was given unto him, as a wise master builder. Because guess what? This building is going to be built through the wisdom of the Most High God. It's not a carnal building. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's, a build, it's a spiritual house built with wisdom of the Lord. You understand? Go ahead. I have laid the foundation mm -hmm. and another buildeth thereon. You see what he's saying? He says, I've laid the foundation and another will come after me, will build upon that foundation. Right? But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. He says, but be very careful on how you build thereupon. He says, you've laid the foundation, and another will build thereon. But he says, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Take heed how you build. The Apostle Paul says he was building as a wise master builder. What was he using to build? He used wisdom to build a spiritual house. Watch this. Go ahead. For other foundation can no man lay than that it is laid, which is Jesus Christ. You see what he's saying? Because the foundation is Christ. Christ is the foundation. Watch this. Give me Matthew 7, 24. Matthew chapter 7, verse 3. The foundation is our Lord and Savior, the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. He's our foundation. Okay? Read that. Matthew 7, verse 24. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 24. Read. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. You see that? It says, if you, if whosoever heareth these things of mine, what are the things of Christ? He commanded us to keep the commandments, and we do them. He says, you will liken him unto a wise man, which builded his house upon a rock. Who's the rock? Christ. Get that in First Corinthians 10. Who built his house upon a rock. Okay, First Corinthians 10, read verse 4. First book of Corinthians, chapter 10, verse 4. Come on. And did all drink the same spiritual drink? Mm -hmm. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them. And that rock was Christ. And that rock was Christ. Go back to Matthew 7. Read verse 24 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 24. Therefore, whosoever heareth the sayings of mine, Doeth, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. You see that? I will say, I'm going to liken him to a wise man which built his house upon a rock. That rock is the Messiah. You know, he's the foundation. Come on. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. So the rain, the flood, the winds that blew upon it and beat upon the house, he talk about the trial, the tribulation. You understand? The challenges that you will face in this truth, in this walk. He says, what? He says, it fell not. He says, it didn't fall because it was founded upon a rock. It was founded upon Christ. That's why it says, let every man take ye how he buildeth thereupon. Go ahead. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man. Which, mm. is, which built his house upon the sand. 
You see that thing? So this fool, a foolish man will build his house upon sand. They are not going to keep God's commandment. They are going to be sneaky Negroes in the congregation, making it seem like they're keeping the commandment, but the Lord will expose you on how you be, how you move it. Why? Because the minute when you start to do things contrary to the doctrine, you are offending the little ones. Because now the brothers that are now that are just arrived, they are looking at you and say, what the hell is going on here? Why is this brother moving like this? You understand why? Because they are seeing other brothers, especially I told you about that friendship. You understand? Familiar spirit. I told you about this, some of you. So some of you, you come in here because you know each other. But guess what? You're still moving in the same spirit of knowing each other, not correcting each other, not setting the right example. Guess what? Now you're teaching the next man who just arrived to move the same way as, as your wicked self. You understand? We will not allow that because you're going to spoil the nobility of their brethren. We're not going to allow that thing to happen. Read again, verse 26. The book of Matthew, chapter 7, verse 26. Praise. And everyone that heareth the sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Which built his house upon the sand. Okay, read. And the rain descended. The floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell. And mm. great was the fall of it. You see what it says? The wind, the rain descended, the floods came. And winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell. You understand? And great was the fall of it. Why? Because it was not built upon a rock. It was built upon sand. You understand? It was, it was not built upon a rock. It was not built upon a sure foundation. It was built upon a weak foundation. Why? Because the brother didn't examine himself. The brother is not dealing with the issues in his life. He is not examining himself properly according to the scriptures. He is cuddling himself with the scriptures. You understand? Watch this. Now, go back to 1 Corinthians 3. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, read verse, read verse 11 again, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 11. Read. For other foundation can no be laid than that it is laid, which mm -hmm. is Jesus Christ. Christ is our foundation. He is our leader. He is our Messiah. Go ahead. Now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, so now watch this. Is this now if any man build upon this foundation, you must he's telling you the foundation that was gonna stand show gold, silver, precious stone. These three, these three minerals right here, gold, silver, and precious stone, these are precious minerals. You understand? These are precious minerals. Gold is precious, silver is precious. These precious stones, like diamonds and all that, these are precious minerals. He says you must build upon the foundation. That is what? Gold, silver, precious stones. But the last three, read the last three. Wood, hay, stubble. Wood, hay, and stubble. These three right here, guess what? A novice, guess what? Their foundation is wood, hay, and stubble. That is their foundation. The foundation of a novice, a wicked Negro, guess what? Their foundation is wood, hay, and stubble. Stubble is not based upon, the, it's not set upon a rock. The winds will come, you understand? The floods will descend, it will beat upon that rock, upon that house, and it will what? It will fall. Why? Because the foundation is weak. They have a weak foundation. What is the foundation? The sincere milk of the word. That's the foundation. The milk, the commandments, the law, the statutes. That's the foundation right there. Watch this. Hmm. Give me the book of Second Timothy 2. Second Timothy chapter 2. Second Timothy 2 verse 20. Watch this. Second book of Timothy chapter 2 verse 20. Mm -hmm. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver but also of wood and of earth, and some, to, and some to honor and some to dishonor. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold, meaning what? 
The great house is the house of Israel. Get that in Matthew 15, 24. Matthew chapter 15, verse 24. But in the great house, what is this great house? Matthew 15, verse 24. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. Mm -hmm. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You see that? The lost sheep of the house of Israel. So go back. 2 Timothy 2, verse 20 again. Second book of Timothy, chapter 2, verse 20. Mm -hmm. But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. So you see what the Bible is saying? This great house is the house of Israel. It says, in that house, you're going to find vessels of gold and vessels of silver. But not only that, you're also going to find vessels of wood and of earth, wood, hay, and stuff. These are not precious stones. These are not precious metals. You understand? And some to honor. The honorable ones are the, are the gold and the silver. The dishonorable ones are the wood and the earth. Go ahead. If a man therefore purge himself from this, the beast is the wood and the earth. Go ahead. He shall be a vessel unto honor. You're going to be a vessel of honor. Come on. Sanctify. And meet for the master's use. And prepared unto every good work. You see what the Bible is saying? It says you're going to be a vessel of honor. Vessel of honor. You're, you're, you're sanctified with the laws of God. You are good for the master's use. Prepared unto every good work. That preparation goes into what? You sit down, you study, you examine yourself. You get your mind right. But then, what's the next part? The vessels of dishonor, this is where they are stuck on. They are stuck on this. Read verse 22. Flee also youthful lust. You see that? The vessels of dishonor, they are stuck. They don't want to, they cannot flee youthful lust. They still stuck in they are still stuck in their lust. You understand? They still stuck in their lust. They are thinking about booty. You understand? That's all they think about. Booty, booty, booty. But follow what? Read. But follow righteousness, mm -hmm. faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. You see what the Bible is saying? It says what? You must flee youthful lust, but you must follow righteousness. God's laws, faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. That's what the Lord is saying right there. So in this great house, there's going to be vessels of gold and silver, but they're also going to have vessels of wood and of earth. The wood and the earth is those brothers that think they know too much, but they don't know nothing. They cannot take correction. They cannot take instruction when they are supposed to receive instruction. And apply it, they argue, they cause strife and division. Meaning what? They are the enemy of our nation. They are the enemy of our race. Understand that? Now, go back, go back to First Corinthians 3. First Corinthians chapter 3. First Corinthians chapter 3. Read verse, read verse 12 again. First book of Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Now, if any man build upon, the, upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, come on, every man's work shall be made manifest. Every man's work, every man's work shall be made manifest. Meaning what? We're going to see it. Go ahead. For the day shall declare it. The day of the trial, the day of your trial. Your work, will, your, your work will be made manifest in the day of your trial. Go ahead. Because it shall be revealed by fire. Because your work will be revealed by trial. The fire goes into the trial here. Go ahead. And the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. You see that thing? The trial is going to try every man's work of what sort it is. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Go ahead. If any man's work abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. That's the kingdom. That's the kingdom right there. Go ahead. If any man's work shall be banned, he shall suffer loss, 
You see and that? he himself? Is, hold on. If every man's work shall be burnt, he shall suffer loss. Go ahead. But he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. Yet so as by fire. Why? Because the trial, your trial, when your trial comes, and guess what? You are able to overcome. You are going to get delivered. That's what the Lord is saying. Now, watch this. Now, what I want you to see is this, these are things I want you to pay attention to. Go back to First Timothy 3. First Timothy 3. Read verse 5 again, because that's where the reason why we went through all these precepts is to explain First Timothy 3, verse 5. Now read verse 5 again. First book of Timothy, chapter 3, verse 5. Come on. For if a man know, know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the, of the church of God? How shall he take care of the church? If you cannot rule your own house, your spiritual house, you will not be able to take care of the church of God. Go ahead. Not a novice. Not a what? Not a novice. Not a novice. Not a novice. Not a novice. Read that again. First book of Timothy. Chapter 3, verse 6. Mm -hmm. Not a novice. Not a novice. Now, let's get the definition of novice. Read. Novice. Read that. Definition of novice. Now, mm -hmm. a person new to and inexperienced in a job or situation. You see what the Bible is saying? A person new to an inexperience in a job or situation. That's a novice. New to this truth and inexperienced in the word of righteousness. You understand? And how to apply it also. Watch this. Read that. Similar. Beginner. Beginner. You are a beginner. Okay. Read that. Neophyte. Neophyte. You are a neophyte. Go ahead. Newcomer. Newcomer, okay. Read that. Apprentice. Apprentice, okay. Read that. Rookie. You see that? Rookie. You are a rookie. Watch this. Punk. You are a punk. Mm. Go ahead. Newbie. Newbie. You understand? Now, look at the opposite. Read that. Opposite of novice. Mm. Expert. Go ahead. Veteran. Maybe so. Now read the next one. A person who has entered a religious order and is under probation before under taking what? vows and is under probation. Is under probation. Meaning what? You are being proved. You are being groomed. You understand? In the word of righteousness. How the hell? You are in, you are being groomed, but you already think you better than the brothers that have been laboring before you. How the hell does that work? Because the Satan is on you. Now, what I want to show you is this now. I'm going to show you something now. What, what I want you to see is a lot of the time, right? You're gonna, I'm going to show you the, 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 the characteristics of a novice. A novice is self will That's a novice. That's number one, right? That's that. A novice is self-willed. Give me second Peter 2, verse 10. A novice is self-willed. You understand? Because they don't have their spirit in check. Second Peter 2, read verse 10. Watch this. Second book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 10. Come on. But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness mm -hmm. and despise government. Read. Presumptuous are they. Self-willed. They are, they are not what? afraid to speak. Self-willed. They are self-willed. They are self-willed. You understand? Go ahead. They are not afraid to speak evil of thee. They are not afraid to go against the order. They are not, a, they are not afraid to argue with a high-ranking soldier or a high-ranking officer. They are not afraid to do that. Why? Because they are self-willed. Read the Bible. Read, read the verse again. Verse 10. Come on. Second book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 10. But mm -hmm. chief, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. Stop right there. And this but mainly, but mainly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. Remember, it says, not on novice. 
You understand? Not a novice. Hmm. Hold that. Go back to First Timothy. There's something I didn't finish in there. Go back. First Timothy three. Something I I didn't. I read. There's a word I didn't read in there. Go back there. First Timothy three. Read verse six again. First book of Timothy, chapter three, verse six. Mm -hmm. Not a novice. Not a novice. We read what a novice is. A newbie, a punk. Go ahead. Lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. No, no, no. Sometimes he might fall into the condemnation of the devil. Lest being lifted up with the pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. So a novice will be lifted up with pride. Guess what's going to happen? He will fall into the condemnation of the devil. Guess what? The devil will be on them 100% 24 hours a day. That's what the Bible is saying. Because a novice is not corrected, and it, especially when they are corrected, they still repeat the same thing over and over. Guess what? Satan is saying, listen, I'm having a field day on this. Why? Because now you are lifted up with pride, you depart from the most high, you fall into the condemnation. What is condemnation? Death. Condemnation is death where you're not going to be able to get up. That's condemnation. That's the condemnation of the devil. You understand? And nobody is lifted up with pride and they've got the devil on them. That's what I wanted to go over. Go back now. And novice is self will Go back to the second Peter's two. Read verse 10 again. Second book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 10. But mm -hmm. chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. You see that? Them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. Remember, it says um, they don't want to flee youthful lust. So get that in Colossians 3, verse 5. Watch this. Them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness. Why are they walking after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness? Here's why. Colossians 3, read verse 5. They don't want to do the book of Colossians. The Come book on. of Colossians, chapter 3, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, fornication uncleanness. Is, hold on. Fornication is a member that wars within you. Fornication is a member that wars within you, which is upon the earth, which is where we act. In captivity. Go ahead. Uncleanness. Uncleanness is a member that wars within you. Right? In ordinate affection. Inordinate affection that goes into unnatural affection. Go ahead. Evil concupiscence. Evil concupiscence and inordinate affection also goes into what? Not respecting order. Hating order that's inordinate affection. Go ahead. And covetousness, which is idolatry. And covetousness, which is idolatry. All of these things that you see here, these are idols. Covetousness, which is idolatry. Watch this. Go ahead. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Those that go against the order. They know the order. They know to do better, but they choose not to. Guess what? It says, for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. The wrath of God will come upon you. Why? Because why? You disobey orders deliberately. You understand why? Because you don't want to mortify those members that wars within us when we come into this truth. Watch this. Give me James 4, verse 1. James 4, verse 1. The reason why you see or uh, we see all these, um, you see these strife, you see strife, envy, strife, envy, and division is caused by this right here. Read that. James 4, verse 1. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. From whence come as wars and fightings among you? Arguments, strife, contention, debate. Where do they come from? Go ahead. Come they not hence, even of your lust that war in your members? You see, that's where they come from. They come from your lust that war in your members. What are those lusts that war in your members? Because that, that's the spirit I'm seeing. Some bro the brothers, they are moving in the same spirit. God, guess what? One does not want to be told what to do because... Who is he that's going to tell me what to do? You understand? Another one is, yeah, who is he that is going to tell me what to do? You see the point? I'm not going to listen to them. And I'm not going to say, I don't want to listen to you. I'm just not going to action the, the order that you give me. Or I'm just going to argue and make you think that 
what you're saying is actually incorrect. Why? Because, read it again, verse 1. This is the reason behind it. Read it. The book of James, chapter 4, verse 1. Come on. From whence come, come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members? You see that? So these, these fightings that come is because of the lust that warring within. And because instead of sitting down and examining those members that are warring within you, guess what? This is what takes place. Now it's spilling out into the, what we're trying to build. It's spilling out into what we're building at SOC to glorify the Lord upon this earth before you stand the test. So, but now when you go against that, listen, me, I don't know you in that day. When you go against that, guess the only reason why I know you is because of this Bible. When you go against it deliberately, guess what's going to happen? You and I, we don't, we're not going to get along. I'm not telling you right now. We're not going to get along. Why? Because Negroes are conditioned to destroy from within. You have a self-destruct sequence that has been built in you from birth. Now, you want that self-destruct button to, to, to ignite at SOC. You crazy. We're building the 12 tribes of Israel here. We don't have time for BS. We don't have time to be rubbing nobody's back. You crazy. You understand? Now, watch this. Give me the book. Go back to 2 Peter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. Read verse 10 again. Second book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 10. Wait. But chiefly, them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness mm -hmm. and despise government. They do what? And despise government. You see that then? Nobody says they despise government. Government is what? Government that the Lord is setting up is, is, is 12 tribes coming together as one, moving in the order as in the days of old. Order, structure, rank. That's the government that the Lord is setting up. Some of you don't understand that. Get Sarah 10 verse 1. Okay. Some of you don't understand that. You see, order is kryptonite to the black man. That's why the black, uh, brothers will come in. They'll act like they understand. They'll act like they're about this. But as soon as you start to tell them what to do, then you start to see, oh, that's the problem that he has. He doesn't like to take correction. He doesn't like to examine himself. He's full of emotion. He's emotional. He's a mama's boy. He's got a beard. He look, you look like you're a man, but you're still a mama's boy. There's a two-year-old that is crying in there, crying for mommy's breast. I'm going to tell you straight up. I'm holding no punches this day. Read the Bible. Sirach 10 verse 1. The, Come on. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 10 verse 1. Read. A wise judge will instruct his people. You see what the Bible is saying? A wise judge will instruct his people. Come on. And the government of a prudent man is well ordered. The government of a prudent man is well ordered. One thing that we hate in that verse right there, you understand, is that last word, that last, that last word right there. Read that part right there. It says, and the what? Actually, read, read from, and the government. And the government of a the prudent government, man. The government, the government. We have a governor over us, the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. It says, and the government of a prudent man is well, what? Is well ordered. Is well ordered. That word right there, government and order. These are words that are kryptonite to us. You understand? Men that hate order, government, order. Those two words right there, kryptonite. Go ahead, verse two. As the judge of the people is himself. You, say, you see that? As the judge of the people is himself. Why? Because that's the example that you have to set. Read. So are his officers. So are his officers. Come on. And what manner of men the ruler of the city is, such all they that dwell therein. You see that thing? Because in the city, guess what? Cities must be well ordered. Cities need a governor to govern them, to tell them what to do, how to when there's problems, we go into the, the Holy Bible to solve those issues. Okay, come on. An unwise king destroys his people. An unwise king will destroy his people. But a wise king will do what? Go ahead. But through the prudence of them which are in authority, 
the city shall be inhabited. The city of Jerusalem will be inhabited by those that what? They are prudent and they will what? They are in authority to set things in order. The most that God is about them. We, be, we like to be individual like so much so that guess what? These things, we think it's okay. No, it's not okay. Because an individual life means you're not about your nation. You're not nation-minded. You are self-minded. It's about you. We cannot move like that. We will not move like that, but you understand? It will not be acceptable. Now watch this. Give me the book of Isaiah 9 verse 6 because it says, they despise government. The government that that, that, that the Lord is setting up is not my government. It's the Lord. He's setting it up. He's setting it in order. And he's using the prophets to do so. You understand? If you have a problem with what the Bible says and how we are applying it according to as it is written, you have a problem with the most high. So why would you be here? I don't get it. The only, the only logical conclusion I can arrive to is that you are here to destroy. Watch this. Read that Isaiah 9 and 6. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. Mm -hmm. For unto us a child is born. Mm -hmm. Unto us a son is given. Right. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. You see that? The government shall be upon his shoulder. This child that is born, this son that is given to Israel, the government shall be upon his shoulder. Hold that. Give me Matthew 26. Matthew, chapter 2, verse 6. Let's read that. The book of Matthew, chapter 2, verse 6. Come on. And thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art mm -hmm. not the least among the princes of Judah? For out of thee shall come a governor that shall mm -hmm. rule my people, Israel. You see that? It says, out of thee, Judah, you understand, shall come a governor that shall rule my people, Israel. The governor is Christ. Who's going to rule the 12 tribes of Israel? Go back to Isaiah 9. Read verse 6 again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. For Come on. unto us a child is born, mm. and to us a, a son is given, right. and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Stop right there. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Let's get the definition of the word government. Hmm. That's some heavy stuff. Watch this. Now, read that for me. Government. Read the definition. Definition of government. Mm -hmm. Now, the group of people with the authority to govern a country or state. You see that? A group of people with the authority that to govern a country or state. Go ahead. A particular minister office. A particular minister in office. That goes, up, goes back to what? The 12 tribes of Israel. The authority that we have to govern is what? The laws of God. That's the authority. God's commandments. But watch this. Hmm. Read that. Similar. Administration. Administration. That's the government. Okay. Read. Executive. Hmm. Read. Authority. Authority. Watch this. Go ahead. Powers that be. Powers that be. Watch this. Council. Council. Mm. Go ahead. Leadership. Leadership. Read again. Leadership. You see that? So high-ranking soldiers, they also the leadership. Some of you don't get that, by the way. Mm. Read that. Management. What? Management. 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 Okay? Management. Now, Go back to Isaiah 9, verse 6. Read it again. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. Come on. For unto us a child is born, mm -hmm. and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. You see that thing? The government shall be upon, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. You see that thing? And the authority shall be upon his shoulder. The administration shall be upon his shoulder. You understand? The leadership, the council shall be upon his shoulder. That's what he's saying. Read on. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, 
the Prince of Peace. Come on. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Mm -hmm, because he's going to rule forever. He's going to be the King of Kings forever. Go ahead. Upon the throne of David and upon, upon his kingdom to order it. To do what? To order it. To order it. That, you see that word right there? Order. That kryptonite to the black wicked Negro who hates command. It says what? To order it. So this government must be well ordered. That's what we read in Tarak. Okay, come on. To And to establish it with judgment. To establish it with just judgment because we make judgments with the laws of God. Read. And with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. You see that the zeal of the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies will perform this. That's what I need you to understand, you men. Understand what you're into. This is a military camp. We're not here to shut and jive to play games, to pop gum. Mm -mm. We're here to wake up the daughters of Israel and our men, the men must be well ordered. The government must be well ordered. The camp must be well ordered according to our crisis commanded us. We're not going to play when it comes to that. Why? Because we've been, for too long, we've been taught and groomed to be individualized. When we come into this truth, we are commanded to change. We are commanded to get our minds right. There's no fear, no favor, no excuses. We, it has to be done. Why? We rehearse in the righteous act. Some of you don't understand that when a brother is set over you to give you command, you, you not wanting to follow that command, you are not rehearsing the righteous act. How, what makes you think that when Christ returns, you automatically will know how to follow instruction? You delusional, you deceiving yourself. Right now, when, when we're setting rank, order, and structure, guess what? We rehearse in the righteous act. That's what we're doing. Get that in Judges 5 and 10. We rehearse in the righteous act. Some of you don't understand that. You understand? Read. The book of Judges, chapter 5, verse 11. Come on. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. I need you in to the put place. some power. Put, put some power in your ring. Have some energy, okay? Come on. Verse 11. The book of Judges, chapter 5, verse 11. Read. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water, mm -hmm. there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord, even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his villages in Israel. Read. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gate. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gate. Then the gate, guess what the gate would be? The leadership. Guess what? It says, but before we do that, we must, in the lens of our captivity, rehearse the righteous act. Rehearsing the righteous act means what? We must come back to the laws of God. We must come back to how it was. When we came out of Egypt, when Moses set up order, rank, and structure in the camp, so that the government, that government, when we came out of Egypt in the wilderness, that must be well ordered. You understand? We have the greatest knowledge on earth. We cannot still be acting like Negroes. Frankenstein's monsters. Hell no. Read that, Sarah 32 verse 21. Because the reason why you notice that brothers, they despise government is because of this. Now you despise government, you hate order, you hate being told what to do, you hate correction. Here's the problem. Give me that in Sarah 32. Read verse 21 and 22. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 32 verse 21. Right. Be not confident in a plain way. You see that? So now a novice is confident in a plain way. They have no foundation in their confidence. So now that confidence is called what? Arrogance. Because why? It does not have any foundational basis. You are a newbie, you are a Johnny come late, but you think you are somebody. You are confident in a plain way. Go ahead. And beware of thine own children. The Lord says we must beware of our own children. As you come into you still a child, we must beware of you. We must beware so that we make sure that we guide you well. When you go outside of the, the realm of the guidance that we provide you, that said the Lord, we bring you back. You, you go against that, you got to go. And go back into the world and do whatever the hell you want to do. That's what you want to do. You understand? Watch this. Now go back to 2 Peter 2. 2 Peter 2, read verse 10 again. Second book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 10. Mm -hmm. 
but chiefly them that walk after the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise government. They, they hate order. Go ahead. Presum presumptuous are they. Self-willed. Mm -hmm. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignity. He says they are presumptuous. They are self, they are unclean. They despise government. They hate law and order. They hate structure. They are presumptuous, which makes them self-willed. Watch this. Let's get the definition of presumption. These are not regular words that we use on a daily basis. So we want to know what they mean. I want to know what they mean. Let's see. It's as presumptuous as are they. Read that. The definition of presumption. Read that. Definition of presumption. Adjective of a person or their behavior. Failing to observe the limits of what is permitted or appropriate. You see that a presumptuous brother or sister is like that what a person or their behavior, meaning their conduct, their character, failing to observe the limits of what is permitted or appropriate. They are given this, that, and the other to do. Guess what? They fail to observe the limits of what is permitted or appropriate. They go beyond that. So what? They are self-willed. Because the reason why they because they have a presumptuous spirit. They tend, they, they automatically self willed They're going to go beyond the limit of what is permitted or appropriate. Watch this. Um, read that. Similar. Forward. They are forward. Now, let's read that first because we read that it says, don't be confident in a plain way. That's what we read in Track 221. Read that. Overconfident. Overconfident. Arrogant. Arrogant. Okay, go ahead. Egotistical. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Bold. Bold. Bold meaning bold towards the laws of God. They go against God's commandment. You understand? Read that. Forward. Forward. They are forward. You see that? They are forward. Read that. Impudent. Impudent. Okay. Watch this. Hmm. Read that. Uncivil. They don't apply the civil laws. They don't apply the civil laws. Watch this. Over hasty. Over hasty. Not, they're not just normal hasty. They are over hasty. What does that mean? They are chachara. Watch this. Hmm. I'm going to show you something this day. I never thought I'll see this day where I have to use this. Now, let me, let me show me. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. This is Julius Malem. Watch this. Now, there's a Chacharach um, BBC journalist here who just interrupted Julius Malema speaking. Watch this. Inside, Zimbabwe, there's everything underground forces fighting for freedom. And we have never <laughs> spoken from uh, 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 exile. You see, yeah, let me tell you, before you, you, you are Chacharach, ne? let me tell you. And we have never <laughs> spoken from uh, 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 exile. You see, yeah, let me tell you, before you, you, you are chacharach. You see what he's saying? Chacharach. That is, the chacharach is the spirit of Esau. Esau has the spirit of being chacharach. That's why Julius Malema had to check him. You understand? And we have never <laughs> spoken from uh, 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 exile. You see, yeah, let me tell you, before you, you, you are chacharach. Ne? This is, a, this, is a, this is a building of a revolutionary. This, this truth right, this truth right here, this truth is revolutionary. We cannot afford Chacharach Negroes among us. Party, exile. You see, yeah, let me tell you, before you, you, you are Chacharach, ne? let me tell you. This is, a, this, is a, this is a building of a revolutionary. So this right here, this house of Israel, this is the house of Israel. The truth is revolutionary. It will revolutionize our nation. Don't be chacharach. We will not tolerate chacharach Negroes among us. Okay, that's it on that. That's it on that. Okay, that's it on that. Go back to 2 Peter 2. 2 Peter 2. Jump down to verse, read verse 12 now. 2 Peter 2, verse 10. Verse 12. Second book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 12. Go ahead. These, as natural brute beasts. You see that? So these brothers that are self-willed, they hate government, they are presumptuous, 
They are not afraid to speak evil of the, the, the leadership. It says what? They are natural brute beasts. What does it mean to be brute? Let's get the definition of that. Brute. They are natural brute beasts. Read that. Definition of brute. Now, mm -hmm. a savagely violent person or animal. You see what the Bible is saying? Is the brothers that are, they hate, they, are, they, they, they live in the lust of uncleanness, they despise government, they are presumptuous, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignity, says these as natural, meaning by nature, they are what? They are savagely violent person or animal. Let's see. Hmm. Read that. Similar. Devil. They are the devil. That's the devil. Whenever you see that type of brother, that's the devil right there. Read that. Demon. That's a demon. That right there, that is a demon. Okay? Watch this. Read. Swine. Swine. You understand? Because they love uncleanness. Okay? Read. Pig. Pig. This is what the Lord is saying. It says, go back to 2 Peter 2, verse, 8, verse 12 again. Second book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 12. But these as natural brute beasts. Natural brute beasts, meaning what? They are demons and they are devils. Okay, go ahead. Made to be taken and destroyed. They are made to be taken and destroyed. The Lord says, you're going to destroy them. Meaning what? You are born to be destroyed. You are born to go against the laws of God. And the Lord will destroy you when you repent, if you don't get your mind right. Go ahead. Speak evil of the things that they understand not. You see that? Because when you are given an order, you speak evil of that. You complain, you mama. You, you want to go back and forth. You want to cross sides. You don't understand the bigger picture. You don't see what we're building. Order. Order. Why? Because we must be well ordered before the Lord returns. Read. And shall utterly perish in their own corruption. Because these are men of corrupt mind. Get that in uh, Timothy. Second Timothy real quick. These are men of corrupt mind. They don't know nothing. Second Timothy chapter 6. Okay. First Timothy. First Timothy 6 verse 4. Read what you got. First book of Timothy. Chapter 6 verse 4. Come on. He is proud. Mm -hmm. Knowing nothing. You see that? These are um, these men, they are proud, they don't know nothing. Come on. But doting about questions and strives of ways. You see that? That's the same way that James used. That's the same way the apostle Paul used strive. They like to cross strife of words. Read. Whereof cometh envy, strife, mm. railing, evil surmising. Evil surmising. Evil surmising. Meaning what? They suspect to this brother. He don't know as much as I do. So therefore, when he gives me an instruction, I'm not going to accept what he tells me to do. Why? Because I'm undermining this guy. Go ahead. Perverse dispute, disputing of men of corrupt mind. You see that thing? Perverse disputing of men of corrupt mind. That's why it says they're going to destroy themselves with their own corruption. Read. And destitute of the truth. They are void of the truth. The truth of the Lord is not in them. Go ahead. Supposing that gain is godly. Because you think you're gaining something when you're arguing with your high-ranking officer over you. Go ahead. From such, withdraw thyself. He says, from such, we must separate ourselves from these men. That's what the Lord is saying. Okay, go back to Second Peter now. Second Peter chapter 2. Okay, Second Peter 2. Read verse 13. Watch this. Second book, of P Second book of Peter, chapter 2, verse 18. Read. And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness. Mm. As they that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. They rioting in the daytime, meaning what? It's like, the, you know what, you see know, these riots, the, the, the riots that you see all over the earth and all that, is that they, they like to do it in the daytime. Meaning what? They are not afraid to speak evil of dignity. That the, apostle, the apostle Peter is repeating the same, he's using different words. He says, that count it pleasure to riot in the daytime. Go against you. In your face. Why? Because they have no respect for the truth. Or for the most high. Go ahead. Spots they are and blemishes. You see that? They are spots and blemishes. Remember, spots and blemishes goes into sin. Read. 
disporting themselves with their own deceivings while they, are, they feast with. Now that's an heavy stuff right there. It says they sporting themselves with their own deceivings while they feast with you. So whether we have feast, they are right there in the midst of us. We come from camp, we sit down, we eat bread and all that. They are in the midst of us. That's what the apostle did, says, while they sporting themselves, meaning what? Yeah, I'm going to do evil. Yeah, I'm going to go against the leadership. Yeah, I'm going to go against the order while they feast with you. What you going to do? Not realizing that the Lord is looking at you and saying, mm -hmm. I'm going to create a ticking time. You are a ticking time bomb. And when you explode, you're the only one that is going to serve this right. Understand? But we're going to bring it out and we're going to check you to your face. Your job is to get it together or to perish. The choice is yours. But we will not allow everything that we've been building to be destroyed by wicked Negroes who hate progress. Now, watch this. Give me the book of Jude. Read verse 12. Because the Apostle Jude, he talked about this. Okay? The Apostle Jude. He explained this thing. Watch this. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 12. Mm -hmm. These are spots in your feast of charity. You see that thing? It says, these are spots in your feast of charity. These men, they are spots, meaning they are, they, these are demons and devils in our feast of charity. Go ahead. When they feast with you. You see that? When they feast with you. Go ahead. Feeding themselves without fear. They have no fear for the laws of God. They don't understand that the Lord is in the camp. Go ahead. Clouds are day without water. Clouds are they without water because in their mind they think they are something but they are not. Go ahead. Carried about of winds. Wind goes into doctrine, the doctrine that is in their head, the lust that would exist within them. Go ahead. Trees whose fruit withered. You see that thing? You are a tree, but your fruit will wither. You're not going to amount to nothing if you keep going like that if you don't repent. Go ahead. Without fruit, without fruit. day. Without the fruits of the spirit, twice day. You were in the world, you were spiritually dead. You come in Israel, you understand? Guess what? You don't examine yourself. You eventually, you go back into the world. You die the second time. Go ahead. Plugged up by the roots. Plugged up by the roots. Read verse 16. Watch this. Verse 16. Mm -hmm. These are mamas, complainers. Mm. Walking after their own lust. You see that? These are mamas and complainers. They're walking after their own lust. This is the same thing that the Apostle Peter said. Go ahead. And their mouth speaketh great swelling words. Mm -hmm. Having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. He says having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Meaning what? I'm going to get close to this brother because this is the type of business. I think I have an advantage when I'm close to this brother. Right? Oh, hell no. The Lord says, these are murmurers and complainers. They walk after their own lusts. They don't give a damn about the nation. They only care about self. Understand what the Lord is saying right there. Now, the next characteristic is they are emotional. They are emotional. No vice is emotional. That's one thing you need to understand. And no vice is emotional. Give me Jude verse 18. Jude verse 18. Watch this. The book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 18. Come on. How that they, how that they told you they should be mockers in the last time. Mm -hmm. Who should walk after their own ungodly lust. You see that thing? They're mocking what the Lord is building. They are mocking what the Lord is building by going against God's order. Read. Right? These be they who separate themselves. Sensual, having not the spirit. You see that thing? They separate themselves out. They cause divisions. They are sensual. They are emotional. Having not the spirit of the Lord, but they put the spirit of Satan. Go ahead. That's it on that. That's it on that. Give me Proverbs 25 verse 28. Proverbs 25 verse 28. I'm almost done. Proverbs 25 verse 28. Read that. The book of Proverbs chapter 25 verse 28. Come on. He that has no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. You see that thing? So these men, they have no rule over their own spirit. They are emotional. They cannot keep their spirit in check. Their emotions, they weigh their emotions on their sleeve. 
It says they are like a city that is broken down and without walls. Because a city that is broken down and so without walls, anybody can sack that city because that city is without protection. That city is like your, is your mind. It has no protection. The laws of God is what's going to protect you and guard it. So why? So you can move in the spirit. Okay? Give me Sarah 33 verse 5. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 33, verse 5. Read. The heart of the foolish is like a cartwheel. Mm -hmm. And his thoughts are like a rolling axle tree. Axle tree. So it says the heart of the foolish is like a cartwheel. A cartwheel, you see those go-karts? Yes, those go-karts. Those wheels, those wooden wheels. The axle tree is that bar that goes between the 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 the, the card wheel. it just keeps rolling over and over why because this mind is unstable this mind right here is unstable give me first kings 21 25 because why the reason why it's unstable is because deep down they are mama's boss and mama's baby they are highly emotional you understand and mama's baby is highly emotional and you're gonna see they, those emotions pop up when correction goes out read that for me First book of Kings, chapter 21, verse 25. Come on. But there was none like unto Ahab, mm -hmm. which did sell himself to work wicked in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. You see that? Is that there was none like unto this wicked demon called Ahab. He sold himself to do wickedness in the sight of the Lord, whom Jezebel, his wife, stirred up. Because what? Jezebel was that wicked demon who was married to Ahab, Guess what? She knew how to stay up her husband. Stay her husband up. Guess what? Some of you brothers, you still holding on to your mother. You still, you are still your mama's boy. You understand? You still a mama's, you still a mommy's boy. So now, what's happening is that when you are talked to like a man, when you are corrected, guess what happens to you? That spirit of a woman that is still sitting down there, it that one, that's what pops up. There was a brother at camp at on on Sabbath. He popped up like a popcorn. He was acting a fool. Some of you act like that. You understand when correction goes out, but you hide it very well. You understand? Second Chronicles. Watch this. Second Chronicles 22. Second Chronicles chapter 22. Read verse 2. Second book of Chronicles. Chapter 22 verse, verse 2. Mm -hmm. 40 and 2 years old was Isaiah when he began to reign. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother, his mother's name also was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. So now it is 40 and two years old was Ahaziah when he began to reign. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. So Athaliah was of the lineage of who? Ahab. Ahaziah, guess what? He was in the he was of the kingdom of Judah. So he, he was southern kingdom. Athaliah was northern kingdom. You understand? So watch this. Give me first Kings 8, verse 26, real quick. Because it's saying the same thing in there, but there's some details in there. Watch this. Second book of Kings, chapter 8, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Two and twenty years old was Isaiah when he began to reign. And he reigned one year in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Athaliah the daughter of Omri, king of Israel. So what we are seeing here says 22 years, that side it says 42 years. He was 22 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. Go back to 2 Chronicles 22 now, read the story. Again. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 22, verse 2. Mm -hmm. 40 and 2 years old was Isaiah when he began to reign. So now, he wasn't 42 years old. You understand? He was not 42 years old. It was in the 42nd year of what of Athaliah's kingdom in Northern Kingdom. He wasn't 42 years old during this time. So it might seem like a contradiction, it is not. He was 22 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. This part right here is saying in the 42nd and in the 42nd year of Ahaziah's reign of Ahaziah, is the 42nd year here is not the, he wasn't 42 years old. It was the 42nd year of Athaliah's lineage Kingdom of rulership in northern kingdom. Okay, understand that. Read that again, verse 2. Second book of Chronicles, chapter 22, verse 2. Forty and two years old was Isaiah when he began to reign. 
and he reigned one year in Jerusalem. And his mother's name also was Athaliah, the daughter of Omri. Really? He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother was his counselor to the wicked. You see that? So now his mother was his counselor. Because his mother was his counselor to do wicked deeds, guess what he's going to do? He's going to be a monster. You understand? You see the scripture in Isaiah 3 verse 12? Get that real quick. Isaiah 3 verse 12. So guess what? If you hate correction, when a man is giving you an instruction as a man, to say you are a soldier, a soldier's job is to follow instruction. That's the job of a soldier. Now you, but you say you are a soldier of Christ, but you cannot follow basic instruction. You are not a soldier, you are a mama's boy. And now you become a monster with a bottle of blue. Watch this. Isaiah 3 verse 12. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3 verse 12. Mm -hmm. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. You see oh, that? my people. Women rule over them. Women rule over them. Go ahead. Oh, my people. They that they which lead thee, cause thee to err, and mm -hmm. destroy the way of thy path. The women that lead you cause you to err and destroy the way of your path. That's what we read in right there. So what we read in the Lord is telling us, that, listen, guess what? When you are given instruction, you emotional, you understand? Guess what? You are a mama's boy. I don't care if you call yourself that you are, I don't care if you are a soldier in Israel, you are still a mama's boy. Guess what? That means you are a monster. Understand that? You are a monster. Like we read about in 2nd Ezra 5. Watch this. Now, the next thing is, and novice, they hate correction. They hate correction. Get that in Sarah 21 verse 6. Sarah 21 verse 6. Read that. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21 verse 6. Mm -hmm. He that hated to be reproved is in the way of sinners. Is in the way of sinners. Meaning what? The way of sinners is what? Going against God's law. You understand? Having pleasure in unrighteousness. That's the way of sinners. Right? But he that feareth the Lord will repent from his heart. Meaning they will do it in sincerity and in truth. They will sincerely repent from their evil way. They will actually do it. They will fight to overcome that evil demon that is upon them. Watch this. Give me that in Proverbs. No, jump down to verse 12. Read verse 12. Watch this. How can I forget that? The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 21, verse 12. Read. He that is not wise will not be taught. Mm -hmm. But there is wisdom which multiplies bitterness. You see that? This wisdom is not supposed to, it's supposed to multiply, it says there, but there is a wisdom which multiplies bitterness. In you. The bitterness is, you have to change your whole self, you have to let go of the pleasures of the world. That's the bitterness, but your job is to change it. But some of you, you remain bitter. You stay bitter. You don't want to change and come out of that bitterness. Now that bitterness turned into hatred. That hatred called, called, turned into strife. That strife called into, called, turned into division in the, in the congregation. We cannot have that. Okay? Proverbs 15 verse 10. Read that. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15 verse 10. Mm -hmm. Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. Right? And he that hateth the proof shall die. You see that? If you forsake the way, correction will be grievous unto you. And when you hate the proof, you're going to die. Give me Proverbs 29, verse 1. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 1. Mm -hmm. He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck. It says, He that is always is often reproved. Hardened, hardened his neck. Why are you often reproved? Because you, when you are reproved, you don't want to fix it. You keep being reproved over and over about the same thing. Your now your heart, your mind, you now you are stiff neck. You're gonna harden your neck. Why? Because you're always reproved. You then you you start to say, but they always getting on me. You know why? Because when you are reproved, you don't fix that. You make it look like you're fixing it, but you don't. Okay, go ahead shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. You are going to be suddenly destroyed, and there's no remedy. The only remedy is what? You have to be, you, you must be destroyed. That's your only solution at this point. That's what the Lord is saying. Jump down to verse 15. 
the book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 15. Mm -hmm. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame. You see that? The rod and reproof, they give wisdom because the rod goes into what? The rod goes, that's the Bible. You understand? It gives, it and reproof, give, they give you wisdom because why? You're not going to repeat the same mistakes. You're going to learn from them. But a child that is left to himself will bring his mother to shame. Why? Because your mother, you're supposed to be following the instruction that she gives you based on the instruction that comes from the father. But when you go against the order that was given, you're going to be ashamed to your mother. You understand? Verse 17. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 29, verse 17. Mm -hmm. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. Right? Yea, he shall give delight unto thy soul. You see, when you correct your son, guess what? He says, he shall give you rest. Because now you know that your bowels will not be troubled in every cry. Whatever he does, you're not going to take up for it. You understand? He says, he shall give delight unto thy soul. Now, give me, give me Proverbs 23. Now, verse 13 and 14. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Withhold not correction from the child. For if thou beatest him with the rod, he shall not die. You see that thing? So he says, don't withhold correction from a child. Because if thou beatest him with the rod, he's not going to die. This Bible is not going to kill you. So this is, this is you being beaten with the rod. You're not going to die. It's going to make you wise. That's why it says, the rod and reproof give wisdom. Okay, go ahead. Verse 14. Thou shalt beat him with the rod and shall deliver his soul from hell. You see that? There's no time out. You are going to what? It says, thou shalt beat him with the rod, the Bible and shall deliver his soul from hell. You understand? Because when you're older, we're not going to spank you. We're going to use the Bible to correct you. And if you don't want to get right, the Lord will what? The Messiah will have to step in and do what he does best. You understand? Now, the next thing is, the final characteristic is that the novice, they always think they know better than those that came before them, which caused them to what? To undermine the leadership. They think they are smarter than those that came before them. That's the mistake that these novices is made. Some of you brothers, simple as hell. Watch this. Give me Acts chapter 4, verse 18. Because that's the same thing they thought about the apostle Peter. They, they thought about the apostle. Watch this. First Peter 4. I mean, Acts chapter 4, verse 18. Acts chapter 4, verse 18. Watch this. The book of Acts chapter 4, verse 18. Mm-hmm. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, Stop they right marveled. Here. So, you see, the, the mindset of a novice, that's how they think. Listen, we're teaching the gospel, boldly so, but they still perceive that we are unlearned and ignorant men. You know why they think that? I'm going to show you something. Give me the book of Galatians. I'm going to show you why they think. You see, the Apostle Paul, he had to deal with this wickedness in the church of Galatia. Watch this. Give me Galatians 2, verse 6. Watch this. Hmm. The book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 6. Go ahead. But of these who seemed to be somewhat. Stop right there. It says, but of these who seemed to be somewhat. Why? Why do they, why were they, why are they seem to be somewhat? Because of what you do in the world. You understand? Some of you think that what you do in the world, the Lord somehow has respect for it. He don't. The Lord don't give a damn about what you do in the world with your job. No, your job is you're just that you're, it's just so that you can have food on the table. That's it. Your true profession is being a prophet of the Lord. Yes, says, but of these who seem to be somewhat, you think you're something in the world because of what you was in the world, what you are in the world. Go ahead. Whatsoever they were, mm -hmm. it maketh no matter to me. You see that? Whatever you do in your job, the Lord don't give a damn about that. Neither do we. Me, I don't give a damn about what you do in the world. I don't give a damn. As long as it's biblical, it's lawful for you to do it, do it. But that don't move me. The Bible says, 
whatsoever they were, it maketh no matter to me. I don't give a damn about that. You understand? Go ahead. God accepteth no man's person. The Lord says, God does not accept no man's person. Whatever it is that you do in the world, the Lord don't give a damn about that. It's, make sure it's lawful. But what the Lord cares about is laboring in this truth. You understand? Go ahead. For they who seem to be somewhat in confidence added nothing to me. He says, for they who seem to be somewhat in confidence, when it comes to this truth, they adding nothing to us. You nothing when you come into this truth. You have to start from ground deep and build a report and build a good report in this in laboring in this truth. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Because the Apostle Paul had to deal with the same demonic behavior in the church of Galatia. So it is today. That's why now when you come into the truth, whatever job you're doing in the world, I don't give a damn how much you get paid. The Lord don't give a damn about that thing. In fact, the most I will take that thing from you. Why? Because you using that thing that you're doing in the world or whatever it is that you are in the world, you're thinking that that somehow gives you authority or you have the right to argue with the brother that came before you in this truth, who was laboring before you in this truth, who has earned a good name in this truth before you. In the sight of the Lord, you don't mean nothing. The apostle Paul had to deal with that. Guess what? We're dealing with that. This is written so why we can shut down wicked Negroes who think you come in Israel, you labor in for a couple of weeks, a couple of months, maybe a year, mm, you think to someone. No. You out your damn mind. I'm going to tell you straight. Go back to Acts chapter 4 now, verse 13. Okay, these men walk with Christ. Read it. The book of Acts chapter 4, verse 13. Read. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. You see that? that this was their perception. Because their sense was deceived. They didn't know nothing. But these men were not unlearned and ignorant men. They walked with Christ. This is Peter and the apostle John. Is that they, were, they perceived them to be unlearned and ignorant men. Go ahead. They marveled. You see, these ones, although they were, although they, 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 they were not on the level of Peter and John, but they also marveled at the way they talked. They marveled. You understand? They marveled. Oh, wow. Where these men come from? But guess what? You have wicked Negroes among us who don't think like that. But I do see them. They marvel when the scriptures be coming up. I see you. Don't think I don't see you. I see you. But guess what? This is your perception of us. Though. You think we are unlearned and ignorant men. Go ahead. And they took knowledge of them that you they had that? been with Jesus. They took knowledge of them. Go ahead. That they had been with Jesus. That they'd been with Christ. That they, these men walked with Christ. You, you see the point? What we're reading here is novices, that's how they look at the men of the most high. That's how they that's how they they, they, have, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignity. They are not. The prophets are begged. You don't know who you're speaking against. You don't know who you're getting against. You don't know. You have no idea. You understand? Watch this. Give me 2 Corinthians 11, verse 16. Verse 16. 2 Corinthians 11, 16. The Apostle Paul had to deal with the same thing. Read it. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 16. Mm -hmm. I say again, let no man think me a fool. You see what he's saying? He says, let no man think me. Don't think we're stupid, all right? We can see. Don't think we're dumb and ignorant men. You might perceive us to be, but guess what? We can see. Don't think we're dumb. We're not. Okay? Read. If otherwise, yet as a fool receive me. He says, listen, receive me as a fool for a second. Watch this. That I may boast myself a little. You see what the Apostle Paul is saying? He says, that's fine. You can receive me as food. Let me boast a little. Go ahead. That which I speak, I speak it not after the Lord, mm -hmm. but as it were foolish in this confidence of boasting. He says, I'm going to speak this thing. I'm going to, let me boast a little. 
in this confidence of boasting, given that you're doing, you, you think you can hold a candle. Listen, shut the hell up. Sit in some corner somewhere. Read verse 22. Watch this. Second book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 22. Mm -hmm. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Read. Are they Israelites? So am I. Mm. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Thanks. Go ahead. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. You see that thing? It says, are they ministers of Christ? You see, he didn't say, he says, are they ministers of Christ? He's questioning it now. Hmm. Are they really ministers of Christ? They are not. I speak as a fool, though. Go ahead. I am more. You see what he's saying? He's, Let me boast the little. Go ahead. In labors, more abundant. You see that thing? Where was you when, when men was laboring? You was not here. You Johnny come lately, but you don't give the men that came before you the respect that they deserve. Laboring in this truth. Go ahead. In stripes above measure. You cannot listen. In stripes above measure. Go ahead. In prisons more frequent. Not yet. Go ahead. In death oft. Yes, we've seen that multiple times. Go ahead. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Mm, go ahead. Watch this. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Mm. Once was I stoned. He says what? Once was I stoned. Listen, we've been through, we are up through this. Stone, bleeding all over the place. Yes, go ahead. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. Not yet, it's coming. Go ahead. A night and a day have I been in the deep. Mm, go ahead. In Jennings often. Listen, go ahead. Come on. In perils of water. Mm -hmm. In perils of robbers. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. In perils by my own countrymen. Yes, go ahead. In perils by the heathen. Yes. In perils in the city. Yes. In perils in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. In perils in the sea. Not yet. In perils among false brethren. Yes, multiple times, by the way. Now, the point is, the Apostle Paul is letting you know, listen, it's about the works. Go ahead. In weariness and painfulness, in mm. watching often. Go ahead. In hunger and thirst. Don't get me started. Go ahead. In fastings often. Don't get me started. Go ahead. In cold and naked. Mm -hmm. Come on. Besides those things that are without. Mm -hmm. That which cometh upon me daily. The care of all the churches. So of all these things, listen, at the end of the day, this is what comes upon us daily. The care of all the churches, all the camps of SOC. That's where the mindset is. You understand? That's where the mindset is. The care of all the churches. Some of you don't understand what's going on. Why? Because at this point, you are not focused with all the classes coming up, with all the lessons going up. The counselors, you just ignore them one ear after the other, like a water or the dad's back. But this is the mindset of a nomad. You understand? That's the mindset. The mindset of a nobody. They think they know, but they don't know nothing. But they have the spirit of undermining other brothers who've been here before them because you're looking on the outside. You don't understand the spiritual things because what? Are you not carnal? Yes, you're still carnal. You don't see things spiritual. So the best thing to do is shut the hell up. Listen and learn. You understand? Get that in Sarah 32. I'm almost done. Sarah 32. Read verse 7. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 32, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Speak, young men, if there be need of thee. And yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. Meaning, shut the hell up. Read. Let thy speech be short, comprehending much in few ways. Mm -hmm. Be as one that knoweth, and yet 
holdeth his tongue. So he say he, they are not saying you know any serious. You don't know nothing, but just act like you know. Just by just shut the hell up. I mean, those that know, they don't speak much. But what's happening here is you've got young men just be running their black mouth when they're supposed to be comprehending much in a few words. What that means? Do X, Y, and Z. Yes, sir. I'm doing it now. That's it. You comprehend much instruction in a few words. What is the few words? Two words. Yes, sir. Go ahead. If thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. You see that thing? If you are be among great men, he says, don't make yourself equal with them. I'm going to give some examples. Go ahead. And when ancient men are in place, use not many ways. Shut the hell up. Now I'm going to show you the, one of the greatest men in, in this book. Matthew 17. Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. Watch this. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 1. Uh-huh. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into the high mountain apart. Now, this is, this is Christ now. Uh, this is the transfiguration of Christ when he was going to be taken up and all that. He took Peter, James, and John. You understand? He took them apart because uh, of, out of the 12, these were the ones that he was closest to the most. Go ahead. And was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, mm -hmm. and his raiment was white as the light. Because now he got that, he had that, you know, that God God. Go ahead. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him. Now, while they were while he was with them, while he was with Peter, James, and John, out of nowhere, Moses shows up and Elijah shows up. You understand? Now they are talking to Christ. Watch this. Moses representing the law. Elijah, Elijah, Elias or Elijah representing the prophets. Go ahead. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. Stop right there. Stop right there. The apostle Peter, the apostle Peter, what is he asking? Read verse 4 again. Matthew chapter 17 verse 4. Come on. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. You see what he's asking? Is it good for us to be here, Lord? Why? Because Moses and Elijah is here. Watch this. Go ahead. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias. You see what he's saying? Is a listen. Is it good for us to be here? Listen. Let us, let many one. Hold that. Go back to Zerach 32. I'm going to show you how our forefathers, they thought. Remember, Moses and Elijah, they came before the Apostle Peter. What is the Apostle Peter doing? He's giving honor to the men that came before him. Read that. Zerach 32, verse 9. Ecclesiastes, chapter 32, verse 9. Come on. If thou be among great men, make not thyself equal with them. You see that? When if you are among great men, don't make yourself equal with them. But what? And when ancient men are in place, use not many words. The apostle Peter was like, listen, we are going to excuse ourselves because we cannot be here. We cannot be here while Elijah is here, while Moses is here. We cannot be here. You see, the apostle Peter, he worked with Christ, but he still understood this thing. You understand? He applied what we just read in Zerah. Go back to G go back to Matthew. Matthew 17, verse 4 again. Matthew chapter 17, verse 4. Read. Right. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. You see what they are saying? Now, he, the apostle Peter is giving respect and honor to those ancient men, Moses and Elijah. Come on. While he had spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. Mm -hmm. And behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, this is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased, hear ye him. That's the voice of the most High God now, out of the chariot. He's saying, listen, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Go ahead. Hear ye him. I mean, listen to him. Come on. And when the disciples heard it, 
they fell on their face and were so afraid. They were afraid. You understand? They were afraid. Some of you need, you are not afraid to speak evil of dignity. You just run your black mouth. Yes, they were afraid. They fell on their face and they were so afraid. Meaning they were very afraid. Remember, these are the apostles. And they were very afraid when Moses and Elijah showed up on the scene. And not only that, the most that God's voice came out of the cloud. He says they were so afraid. Read. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. You see what he's saying? He said to them, Arise, be not afraid. Where did you just read that? Go back to Zerach. Zerach 32 verse 7. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 32 verse 7. Speak, young man, if there be need of thee, Mm -hmm. And yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. You see that? And yet scarcely when thou art twice asked. They had to wait for Christ to even tell them. Jesus Christ came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And scarcely when thou art twice asked. Because Christ had to do that. Only then they had to, they had to follow the next instruction. You understand? Go ahead. Let thy speech be short. Comprehending much in few words. Mm -hmm. Be as one that knoweth and yet holdeth his tongue. You see that? Because remember, the apostle Peter, they walked with Christ. Whatever Christ taught them, you understand, whatever he knew when he was with them, he taught them. That's why when he left, they were able to, work, to continue the acts of the apostles. But the point is, they knew, these men knew, these men are not those wicked Negroes that just showed up with you. No. These men, they worked with Christ for three years, they worked with Christ. So they knew more, a hundred million times more than we can even possibly imagine. Guess what? They still held their tongue. They said nothing until they were asked what to do next. But guess what? You have wicked Negroes who, listen, you don't read the Bible. Just sit down and be quiet, listen, and learn. Then you can know something. You understand? I'm showing you some great, great example of great men in the Bible, forefathers in the Bible. Moses. Moses, that's a heavy hitter. Elijah, that's a heavy hitter. What are you talking about? You understand? Even they knew, the, Peter, James, and John, they knew how to behave themselves. But not the Negro. Not the Negro. You cannot make this up. Okay? So, I'm going to end the class right there. I'm going to end the class right there. Oh, praise to the Lord. Oh, praise to the Lord. Let's break bread in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Okay? Read that. For I have received of the Lord that which also I deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. All praises to the Lord. All praises. All praises to the Lord. All praises. All praises.